The morning sun shone on the windows of the school. The guy was wiping the board and looked questioningly at the girls sitting behind him. It was Shindo. He forgot the name of the second girl, but remembered that her name was Hakazaki. They were rarely seen together, although he didn't care about that. And this is the beginning of their adventures. The students bowed to the teacher, and he turned to Itsuya and asked her to come over for a minute. The guy was the only one who still hadn't filled out a form about future plans. He was a pretty fast runner, and if he joined the athletics club, it would help him get into high school. The teacher advised me to think about it, and the national competition between secondary schools was already on the nose. The teacher was wondering if he was interested in anything at all. Itsuyo replied that he had looked at many different things, but had not found anything worthwhile. He wanted to finish as soon as possible, because he still had to clean up the dungeon. He wasn't interested in Tokyo schools, so it didn't matter what he chose. The teacher wanted Yatsuyo to start telling the truth and find friends he could trust, because it's unclear what life will be like in high school. The guy felt that the teacher's words made sense. He decided to choose an ordinary high school not far from home. The bell rang. Yatsuyo realized that he needed to hurry up and finish cleaning so that he could make it in time for the raid to begin. He continued to wipe the board and thought again about the girls who are rarely seen together. Shindo seemed amazing to the guy. He remembered the moment when he saw the magazine where it was printed. It was as if she was born to work as a model. Although it was surprising, she was still beautiful. He was thinking that their worlds were different. A guy like him has nothing to hope for, and all he knew about Hakazaki was that she had some kind of health problem. The guy finished with the blackboard and turned to the girls with a smile, saying that he would close the class soon. The girls were not there. He didn't even realize when they left. Suddenly, a picture of a strange world appeared in front of him. He didn't understand what was going on. Etsu was shocked. He heard a voice and turned around. There was a female voice that rejoiced at the appearance of a man. The girl said his name, and the guy called the girl's name and again forgot the name of the second one. Shindo said that half-face was coming and the first thing he needed to do was calm down and listen to the man. At the same moment, a hand fell on Yatsuya's shoulder, saying, This is our first meeting. Let's get to know each other. The man said that he is a game master. In the future, he will be able to get to know him better. The guy turned around screaming. There was a man with no clothes on. He said they would start by explaining the rules of the game. He asked us to work together to complete the quest. Itsuyo asked to slow down and tried to find out what was going on. Shindo shouted for the man to be allowed to finish. The man continued. One of the tasks was to fulfill the order of the village elder. The time limit is 14 days. Shindo angrily asked once again to let him finish and, waving her foot, hit him on the buns. The guy was surprised that it didn't hurt at all. However, they had no reason to worry, because until your whole group disappears, they will truly live. In addition, each of them will have 30 seconds, after which they will be resurrected. There will be eight more phases ahead of them before completion. The first participant will be added to each phase. The final quest will be completed by a group of 10 people. Later, he could ask his companions about the rewards for each phase. The wind mage is Shindo Yuwu. The swordsman warrior is Hakazaki Kyusu. The class of the third participant is Etsui Yusk. Fate will decide. This is a class roulette. Etsui remembered that he saw a roulette that he often watched on TV. The girls prayed that the guy would get a warrior, but he did not understand why they were fixated on the warrior. The wheel stopped and the most unexpected thing fell out, the farmer. The man said goodbye and disappeared. Character window, health 150%, body 200%, legs 204%, strength 114%, endurance 154%. Skill, identifying edible plants. Itsuyo looked at Shindo in confusion. She was upset and offered to talk on the way. At the same time, she wanted to know what kind of weapon he had. The guy asked again, and she said that he could check by squinting his eyes. He did what he was told and saw the scythe. The controls were like on a smartphone, you can just drag and drop. When he looked at it, he had a scythe and a hoe. He realized that he was really a farmer. In the end, he chose a scythe. He cannot use other items as weapons. He called her, and she turned out to be very tiny. And so their adventures began. Itsuyo ran with a scythe at the goblins and at the first blow it broke. He reminded me that he still has a hoe but it also broke. They sat by the fire in silence. Hakazaki was sitting crying. Shindo was trying to calm her down. Itsuyo said it wasn't his fault. After all, he died because his weapon is full of slack. The guy wondered what the rewards were at the end of each phase. Shindo said that he was given the right to ask the game master a question. 
After the first phase, her question was about why he chose her. The answer was that someone who knows her asked the master. Hakazaki said that after the second phase, she wondered who he was, and he replied that he was a man from the future. Atsui was surprised and repeated the above questions. He was wondering if he should ask, and also decided to be on duty first. The girls agreed. He didn't like his position. Despite the fact that he has not yet understood all the nuances of this world, only one thing is clear, that now this is his reality. He chose the hoe again, but it was already broken. Its characteristics are shown as a percentage. When they reach a certain level, he will be able to use skills that depend on these stats, compared to incredible warrior stats and weaker mage stats, but with the ability to cast spells, the farmer is weak to say the least. The only advantage is the accelerated growth of experience. But despite Hakazaki's good stats, in reality she is very weak. In their world, she couldn't even go to the gym. He couldn't shake the feeling that this game was going to end very soon. Walking along the path, I noticed something. It was a recording point. She sometimes records events taking place near her. By touching it, he will be able to look. He saw the girls talking among themselves. Shindo talked about the next phase and asked the second girl who she would like to invite. She wanted to invite Yamada. He was a guy who won national judo championships. But the girl meant the one who likes Hakazaki. As it turned out, the girl disliked all the guys because they are stupid and cruel, and their conversations are on personal topics. Shindo said that if it was her, she would have chosen Yatsuyo. The guy was surprised. There were two with that name in their year. The connection started to break, and the guy started to get angry. The dot disappeared. The guy was only worried about one question now. Who did she mean? In any case, there is a 50% chance that it was about him, two girls and one guy. Perhaps in the future they will tell him. He waved a broken hoe and five hours later realized it was time to change. He was walking through the forest and approaching the camp. Shindo shouted at him to run. In front of him was a huge beast that was trying to eat the girls. There was a crunch and the girl's body was in the monster's hand. Yatsui realized that if he died, then everything would be over. He needed to hold out for 30 seconds. He decided to flee to the village. He was helpless. He only had a wooden stick. It was not an opponent that could be handled with a branch. Hakazaki had almost recovered. Only her left arm wouldn't budge. Most likely, the fact is that she was eaten. Itsuyo realized that Shindo would not be able to recover, and if the two of them disappeared, then they would be finished. He has no attacking skills, and Hakazaki didn't have an arm. The only way out of this situation is to avoid the monster and finish the quest ignoring Shindo. They came to the village, and everyone immediately started shouting. The girl pointed the way to the elder, who was waiting for them. There was an old man who introduced himself as the elder of this village. Their village was attacked by a monster called a troll. He asked them to help them remove it. Yatsui realized that this was the monster they had run away from. The elder showed this troll and once again asked to rid their village of him. He couldn't refuse. He also asked the girl if she got rid of goblins. The girl said that she did not strike the decisive blow. Itsuyo was annoyed. He thought that Hakazaki was useless and asked himself why she had survived. Because it would have been better if Shindo had stayed with him. He decided to increase his level. And she annoyed him a lot because she hates guys. Looking at the map, he noted the approximate position of the troll. So he had to avoid them. He didn't quite understand the meaning behind raising his level. But it seems to him that there will be an opportunity to change classes if he pumps his own to the maximum. He was there, it remained to find a couple of goblins. This forest brought back memories to him. Every time he starts to remember his past, he approached the goblin from behind and began to knock him to the floor, saying that he preferred to work alone. The guy started fighting with a group of goblins. He hated Tokyo, but he defeated all the goblins that they were in shock. He hated people in Tokyo even more. Even if his life is in constant danger, it seemed to him that this world was still a hundred times better than the cesspool they called Tokyo. Just when he begins to remember the past, his mind begins to be shrouded in a veil of hatred and malice. He was pierced by memories, he exhaled and lowered his head. He needed to calm down, he got carried away too much. He saw the ninth level and was surprised, because usually the eighth level is the maximum in Japanese games. He was waiting for the moment of his promotion, he really needed an upgrade. The guy couldn't continue at this pace indefinitely. He needs a sword or something like that, he would like to become a warrior. He saw that Hakazaki was waiting for rebirth again. He didn't understand what she was doing, wasn't she supposed to be in the village? He walked up to the cliff and saw the village smoking. The quest was a failure, he couldn't disappear now. He also didn't know how it happened, but he had to hurry up. Hakazaki was not reborn. Yatsui realized this and thought that she had been eaten. In that case, if he suffers the same fate, then they will disappear for real. 
He didn't understand where everyone had gone. The guy couldn't find anyone. He was screaming, looking for someone alive. He didn't understand what had happened. A recording dot appeared in front of him. He asked for some information. He saw a disgruntled child who was surprised that the hero was so bad with a sword. Hakazaki was nervous. She began to explain to the child that in her world she had always had poor health, so she could not exercise. This is the first time she's wielded something so heavy. The child asked again about the world. The girl continued. Every month, her parents bought 50,000 yen worth of medicines to prevent a relapse. Initially, her mom and dad wanted two children, but the opportunity was no longer there. Anyway, she couldn't get sick in this world, but she didn't get any stronger either. Therefore, she was left behind again. It's always the same, over and over again. The girl began to cry. Since birth, she has only brought trouble to the people around her. She would never have survived alone. Therefore, while she is healthy, I hope that she would be able to help everyone. The girl apologized to the child. She just needed to talk it out, because there was so much going on that she didn't know what to do. But she wanted to do her best. She will protect everyone no matter what. Etsu was in shock, really since he was transferred to this world. There was a scream. The guy was thinking that he only cared about himself. The monster was advancing on the village. Hakazaki shouted for people to escape, and she would buy them some time. The guy realized that he was doing this not only in this world, but also in his own. The girl shouted at the child to run away. The monster threw the girl back. She crashed into the wall with her back and was very surprised. Hakazaki saw a monster coming at the boy. She tried to protect him, but flew back into the wall. She opened the weapon kit and selected a shield. The monster broke through the wall, so that the girl flew into the house. She was in pain, and the monster was already crawling after her. The monster grabbed her in the arm, and she asked for help, asked for it from Yetsui. The guy was surprised by this. He heard a monster roar from behind. He didn't know what to do, he thought he should fight, but immediately discarded the idea. He made the decision to run, he couldn't finish here. The monster was too fast. The guy leaned on a stick and jumped up. The stick broke, and the guy took off, thinking that this was the end and he was definitely not a tenant. After graduating from junior high school, one day they would come back and dig up this time capsule, it was a promise. Everyone agreed. Etsui said that he would definitely come back, and the guys would be waiting for him. He remembered the conversation. Shindo wondered if he had decided what he would do in the future. The guy confirmed it and asked the girl in response. She hadn't decided who she wanted to become either, but she was going to enroll in Moro Science and Technology High School. Hyusu was going to go there too. Shindo asked Hakazaki if that was the case so far. Her goal was the famous medical university. In the future, she would like to do research in the field of medicine or something like that. It was in Yatsuya's mind that he didn't care about it, because it had nothing to do with him. Until this moment he remembered the girl's words about the disease. He thought that her dream of practicing medicine was related to the fact that her medical bills were causing problems for her family. It seemed mawkish to him, more like some kind of tearful TV show. The monster jumped to where the young man had just landed. He realized that even he was better than him. A guy like him, in this alien world. He can't afford to disappear just like that. The monster landed with a crash, and the guy ran screaming. He decided to add him to the list. Shindo stood above all in this list, and after her appeared Hakazaki. He would never let people better than him disappear, whether it's in the past or in the present. The monster jumped right at the guy, but he managed to dodge. He could predict its movements, and before each attack, the monster was preparing to jump, just like a frog. And if he is right, then it will be enough for him to simply change direction at the moment of his jump, and he will miss. As long as he is able to escape, Yatsuya will not lose to him. He was running and thinking that he couldn't stop. At one point, he turned around and saw that the monster was flying straight at him. He tried to run away again, but suddenly screamed at the sudden appearance of the troll. He immediately dealt with him and raised the level to the last. The monster was already trying to grab him, but stopped. A man from the future appeared, who congratulated Atsuya on raising his level, and he was very glad that he could, putting everything on the line. It's time to spin the roulette wheel again and change the class. The guy did not expect this and asked for time to collect his thoughts, but the man had already started to spin the roulette wheel. The guy began to pray that they would give him something with a blade, or better yet, that they would give him a warrior with a sword. The guy got a cook, from this information he fell to the ground. Yetsui was very indignant at the weak skills. He decided to look at his weapon and there was a knife. He was glad that he had a blade. The cook's skill was knowledge of the anatomy of monsters below C rank. The guy looked at the monster and was horrified. Etsu saw the monster's stomach. He stuck a knife, liquid splashed on his face. The monster's hide was very durable. 
The monster woke up and threw the guy away from himself, and then fell. Itsui was happy and even mocked the monster a little. The girls began to revive. The guy was smiling. He exclaimed joyfully that the girls had returned. It worked, the guy said to keep an eye on him, because he knew the pattern of his attacks. The guy shouted at the monster to follow him. Yitsuyo ran in the opposite direction and explained that it was necessary to change direction at the moment of his jump. Shindo objected that moving at such a pace was extremely energy-consuming. Even if he could dodge, he could do it once, maybe twice. But the monster began to suffocate. The girl assumed that it was because of the bleeding. The guy said that even despite such a huge body, he is able to jump 20 meters. The hide was too strong, his muscles were like armor. The guy knew that none of them had enough attacking power to break through the troll's defenses. The monster hit the guy with his fist, he disappeared, then it happened again with Hakazaki, and after that the monster injured two girls at once. The guy was resurrected with a laugh, the monster grabbed Yitsuyo, but the guy continued to fight. They didn't disappear so often anymore. It seemed that everyone was gradually getting used to his movements. The guy decided to finish. He was going to get inside the wound and attack from the inside. Shindo understood. The guy could see the circle that showed the monster's attack radius. And now, with all his sacrificial determination, he flew into the monster's wound. As planned, he launched an attack from the inside. The monster was trying to pull the guy out of the wound. But Yatsui managed to inflict a couple more wounds. The monster threw the guy away but could no longer move, but continued to fight. Shindo remembered that the initial wind magic only allows the magician to change the flow of air. Because of this, low-level wind mages have almost no attacking abilities. However, she inserted a staff into the monster and summoned the wind. A completely different effect appears if the spell is cast according to the type of injection directly into the target's body, filling it with air. The monster fell lifeless. Etsu was reborn. He was scared by a man with congratulations who announced that the quest was completed. Itsuya wondered why the man always appeared behind him. Hakazaki realized that the levels had jumped dramatically. She had already reached the fourth level. Shindo said that magicians' experience growth is quite slow, and she also noted sarcastically that farmers and chefs are growing too fast. Her own level rose by two and became the fifth level. Etsu said that there is, that is, his level became the fifth. The man gave the right to ask a question for completing the quest. The guy started saying again that the man was in too much of a hurry. He began to think about what to ask. There were a lot of thoughts in his head. He wondered who was behind all this, what purpose was behind their departure to this world, what these people wanted from them. As a result, he decided to ask where they would go on time and after the tenth phase, when to complete the quest. The girls were surprised. The man only said that they should enjoy the version of their events in their world. They were shown their city in the real world. They've dealt with all the monsters except the last one. Itsui opened his eyes, he didn't understand what had happened. He's back. The girls didn't understand what had happened either. They were fighting this monster. Time was ticking again. Shindo decided to engage in club activities, saying to look at the clock. As it turned out, time stood still while they were in that world. The guy didn't understand anything, because they had been there for more than two days. He wanted to say something, but Shindo took his hand, saying that it would be a few weeks before the start of the fourth phase. She is still alive and can join the national competition in high school. Thanks to him, her second year was not in vain. The guy was embarrassed and remembered that for the third year he could not participate in the national. He was still in shock from everything. Shindo said goodbye, saying that it was time for her to go to the club room and she asked Itsui to get Kyusu home safely, because lately it has not been quiet here. The guy remembered that he was on duty and he had to close the class. By the way, this was the first time he was alone with a girl after school, the very first time in his life. The girl standing in front of him scared him more than any monster. If he doesn't do his best, then perhaps the city he hates so much will be completely destroyed. Yetsui was walking through the streets of the city and thinking about something. His heart was pounding the whole way. Yesterday, for just 10 minutes, an unknown man moved him into a world reminiscent of medieval Europe. Complete missions with a possible losing outcome. There are still 8 phases to go through. Hakazaki thanked Yetsui for keeping them alive thanks to him. The guy sighed, remembering the unknown man. He said that now they have the same fate. Yetsui looked at the girl with a sly look and said that he had saved them, but this was not his profession. Then asked if she was listening to him. The guy thought that the girl did not understand him. He said that he dislikes stubborn people a little and hates commanders. Etsu wondered if he was being too direct, in case she would be offended. The guy asked if anyone had survived in that world. They need to stick together to win. Hakazaki looked at the guy in surprise and said that his thoughts sounded reasonable, so they were a team now. 
Shindo sat on a bench near the lockers and corresponded with Kyusu. She informed him that she did not know what he had said, but he had passed the test. A girl came up to Shindo from behind and started asking what she was so happy about. Shindo told the girl that she was checking out Yetsui's boyfriend, who is not a member of any club. After asking if they went to elementary school together, the girl replied that he transferred in the sixth year of study in the winter. Interrupting her friend, Shindo asked her if she liked Yetsugo. The girl said that she did not like the guy in any way, he was ordinary and silent. She was tense. The girl said that it was useless to build a relationship again, now she is in high school. Since she had never spoken to him since entering high school, Shindo did not expect such a harsh answer and asked her friend why she was so suddenly. Shindo was very happy that she had the opportunity to talk to him. She still thinks what kind of person he is. Such guys have long been extinct. It was already quite late, it was dark outside. Etsui ran around the yards. He thought that running in the mountains was many times more convenient, and the concrete irritated him. He had a lot to think about. What a world. About dreams, about magic, about death and the resurrection of the body. And also, he should have thought about a man from the future with half a head. A real man from that unknown world. But is it from the future? If you approach the speed of light, you can get into the future and then how to return to the past. The guy was remembering a mysterious man. He thought about his words, that it was worth enjoying his version of the world. Etsui thought it was strange and it could be a parallel world. Etsui continued his run and kept thinking about a parallel world. Because maybe he was with magic, or maybe magic and the world were virtual. And if so, to what extent are they virtual? The guy kept remembering everything that had happened to him. Itsuyo did not understand how this was possible, because in that city he fought with someone who looked like a dragon. The guy thought about the fact that he was supposedly fighting to protect the city. He didn't know if it was the future. He wondered why he was the one. Because he hates this city, why did they choose him? Hakazaki in that world is strong and with a high level, Yetsui has the 10th level, and Hakazaki has about the 50th. The guy continued to ponder. Then they are not selected based on physical characteristics. Age. It's quite possible. The guy mused, continuing his run. Suddenly, the guy was distracted from his thoughts by a phone call. Etsu did not expect a call at such a late hour. He did not know who it might be. Picking up the phone, he saw that the game master was calling him. The guy did not expect such a call. He was shocked. The game master turned to the guy and informed him that he had a night and half a day. The terrified Yitsuyo did not know what to do, because now the man is calling him. Well, if you compare it with today's adventure, the guy thought, it will be easy. Yitsui asked the game master what happened. In response to hearing that the task was a gift, success or failure here would affect the success of the next quest. The guy was perplexed by what was happening. He did not understand what the task was about, but he was ready and asked what needed to be done. The guy listened attentively to the man, who informed him that he was going to have a date now. Yitsuo did not expect such an answer, he was shocked. In the middle of the night, the guy needed to get to his school. Continuing to talk on the phone with the game master, he asked if he needed to go to the second floor in the second building. The guy needed to come to the place where the light was on. He was surprised, because it was a women's toilet. Is this where his date will take place? When he entered the women's bathroom, he saw girls who did not expect to see him at all. One of them was filming on her phone while the others were busy with something. As it turned out, one of the girls was lying on the floor while the other two were holding her. All the girls turned to look at Yetsui. The guy was shocked by what he saw. He started telling the man everything. The game master told him not to turn around. He said that it was none of his business, then asked if Itsui would call him later. The girls have been watching the guy all this time. The guy turned around and apologized to the girls. He was very embarrassed. He thought about the fact that it was his first date in such a place, and then someone was being bullied. The girl who was filming everything turned the camera on Yetsui, and angrily asked what he was doing and who he was. She said it was a women's bathroom and he couldn't go in there. Etsu noticed that the girl was taking it off. He thought that the video of him in the women's bathroom might get on the internet. The guy wondered what if the purpose of the date was a girl who was being bullied, then what could happen because of these photos. Yetsui was very scared, then his mission would fail. Etsui remembered the words of the game master, that he shares his fate with others, the success of the next quest. Suddenly, the guy was inspired. He thought that in this case the risk of losing would increase. He needed to break the phone. Yetsuya suddenly stopped running straight to the girl filming him. The girl did not expect such an action from the guy. She was very scared. The guy abruptly snatched the girl's phone out of her hands. The girl looked at him angrily and told him to return it immediately. She noticed that the guy was deleting the data, but noticed that it was okay. He would take another picture tomorrow. 
Upon hearing this, Yatsuyo broke the phone in half. All the girls were shocked by this. The girl who owned the phone was very angry and upset that the guy broke her phone. The guy said that now no one would find out and, accordingly, it would increase the success of the date. The girl who broke the phone was still sad about what had happened. She said that there are backups with addresses, but the functional data cannot be restored. She also noted that the phone costs 50,000 yen. Itsuyo suddenly remembered the conversation of the girls, that one of them said that she would need to support someone and everyone agreed. The girl who was left without a phone promised that she would take revenge on the guy for this and that he would pay for it. It suddenly dawned on Yetsui. He realized that the remaining two girls also had phones. The guy walked quickly towards the girls. They said they hadn't photographed anything. Not believing their words, the guy snatched the phone from the girl with short hair. She urged him not to break it and offered to check her phone for photos. Without hesitation, Yetsui broke the phone of the girl with short hair. He said there might be hidden folders there. The girl was very upset when she saw her broken phone. The girl who lost her phone first was indignant. She told Itsuya that he was scary and nasty, then asked if he understood Japanese. The girl lying on the floor was still shocked by the guy's act. She asked if he was breaking phones to be sure. Oh, she thanked the guy and said it was too much. Pleased with himself, Yetsui said that he did everything perfectly and, if he is not mistaken, this is the first time in his life when he quarrels with girls. The guy said that there was still one phone left and asked where it was. Yetsuyo exchanged glances with one of the girls. Looking around, the guy saw the bag standing after the sink and thought that the phone was lying there. The guy jumped off the seat and ran to the bags. When he reached them, he grabbed one of the bags, but then one of the girls blocked his path. The guy deftly took the phone out of his bag. He held the phone up so that no one could grab it. The girl looked at the guy with a pleading look and asked him not to break the phone, saying that she had nothing to do with it. Don't give up listening to her, Yetsuyo broke the phone in half again and threw it on the floor. The guy was happy with his victory. He said that he had just raised the success of his date. The girl who had just lost her phone went to the guy and tried to stab him. The girl who struck said she was hurt. She didn't understand why she was hurt because she kicked him. The girl continued to say that he does not understand anything and does not listen to anyone. He is a personal topic. He can do a lot of harm than telling her that she is not well. She said that tomorrow or sometime, they would do it again. Itsuyo turned to her and asked if she would try it with him or if he was very strong for her. And he wondered how to deal with them. The girls ran out of the toilet. They did not understand who Itsuyu was and said they ran to call the police. The guy didn't have time to tell them anything and wondered if they would really call the police. The guy began to think that this was bad, but it wasn't him who committed the crime. But then he remembered that he had no proof. Itsui returned to the toilet and remembered about the evidence. He broke someone else's property. Fingerprints on phones need to be destroyed. He started stomping on the phones with his feet. After that, the guy collected the phones and threw them into one of the toilets, after which he sighed happily and with relief. Coming out of the booth, the guy laughed nervously and said that somehow everything turned out unexpectedly, then suggesting to the girl to pretend that nothing had happened. The girl got to her feet and agreed with this, she thanked Yetsui. Yetsui invited the girl to leave there, because after all, this is a women's toilet, thanking her then in return. The guy wondered what to do, because they are here together. Pleased with himself, Itsui and the embarrassed girl walked along the dark street. The girl wondered if the guy was going to walk her home. And at this moment, Itsui was thinking that this is a pleasant feeling of a defender. A guy and a girl walking along the road together. The girl turned to the guy in fright and asked if he was a maniac by any chance. Itsuyo replied that he was from this school. The girl asked the guys if he was afraid of bullying from these girls, because their camera was connected to a microphone. After thinking a little, the guy replied that maybe he wouldn't see one video. The girl agreed with him. The girl walked and thought aloud that soon there would be conversations about her among the boys. It suddenly dawned on her because it was disgusting. The girl blushed and tears appeared in her eyes. She said that at least they didn't know her name. Atsui was confused. He didn't know what to do in such a situation. The guy told the girl to ignore them. Itsuyo didn't know how to calm the crying girl at all. It might be worth hugging her shoulders, but he's not her boyfriend. If he does that, won't he be arrested? The guy decided to just wait. The guy suddenly remembered that the game master had not been calling for a long time, thinking he had become more frequent at the scene of the incident. After waiting a bit, Itsui decided that it was already possible to ask if the girl was alright. Turning to the girl, he noticed that she was uncomfortable. Before she could ask, the girl herself said that she was already fine. The guy said it was great and thought it was time to finish and go home. Itsuo invited the girl to go. The girl suddenly said that it was like in a game about promoting an idle guy, so cool and fashionable. 
Atsu didn't understand what she was saying and just agreed. The girl began to explain to the guy that in addition to the main character, there is a producer girl who, in addition to producing, enters into a relationship with other guys. Atsuya felt awkward, he didn't understand what she was talking about. The girl suddenly started shouting that this was not a game that you could get out of by playing the image of a handsome man, and this also applies to Atsui. The guy looked at the girl in disbelief and thought that she was an otaku all over her head. Two hours later, the game master got in touch. Atsui was sitting and playing a video game console. He was thinking that in the end this puzzle had been solved in a good way. Images began to appear in front of Atsuya's eyes. The guy moved into a parallel world, where Hakazaki and Shindo were already standing in front of him. Atsui sighed, he said he was tired of it all. The girls greeted him. Turning back, the guy saw a familiar girl in front of him, whom he was escorting home. She was shocked by what was happening and didn't know what was going on. Atsui thought that there were already four of them and did not understand why a week ago, there were only high school students, which meant that there was something else the guy was thinking what to do. The girl who arrived in another world was looking around for the first time. She was scared and didn't understand where she was, she thought it was because she was uncomfortable. Turning to the girl, Yitsuyo also wondered what she was doing here. The game master came up to the girl from behind and put his hand on her shoulder, wishing her a good evening. The girl did not expect to see a man in front of her and was very scared. The game master said he was starting to explain today's assignment. There are changes in the rules. The resurrection time increases from 30 to 40 seconds. In addition, he does not know who it is, what kind of cargo and where the place of delivery is. The task was to walk 5% of the map and deliver things to the radar. The guys were given their professions again. Shindo Yu was a magician with the element of wind. Hakazaki Kyusu was a swordsman. And Yitsuyo Yusuke was a cook. The game master approached the wheel and said that it was time to find out what profession Takatate Yuki would have and began to spin the wheel. The arrow pointed to the profession of a magician with the element of fire. Takatate was shocked by what was happening. The game master said goodbye to the guys. Yitsuyo approached Takatate and asked what she was so afraid of. She said that there was no need to be afraid. The girl was looking at her new clothes and asked if it was a kidnapping. Takatate suddenly recognized Itsuya and said that she understood everything. Because two weeks ago, at school, it was not a chance meeting, the girl thought that the guy was following her. Itsuyo began to explain that the girl was wrong. Then Shindo interrupted him and said that Takatate was mistaken, because they were also kidnapped by a man with half a head. It's been a while. The girls were talking and Takatate calmed down a bit. Takatate asked what would happen now. Shindo said she heard that two weeks ago, Yitsuyo helped her out. And after that, Takatate calls him bad. Shindo explained that the game master and Itsuyo are not accomplices, even if it may seem like it, but it is not so. Yitsui thought that Shindo was protecting him. He did not understand why Takatate was afraid of him, because he had saved her. Hakazaki didn't understand why she was afraid of him. She replied that the four of them decided to take a walk around someone else's school. And the guy got into the women's bathroom to install a hidden camera there. Atsui was angry and asked about the number of people, because if he was not mistaken, there were three offenders. The girl confirmed it, but at the same time she put up with them. The guy asked in surprise, is that what it's called now? She didn't understand if this was a bad thing. And I asked him not to get involved in other people's relationships. He asked me to agree that he's not a bad guy. The girl agreed, but wanted to think, he took the three girls' phones and smashed their phones, then flushed them in the toilet. There is no trust in such a person. It sounded convincing. The girls looked at the guy in surprise, and he asked them to forget everything. He turned away from the sound. Something landed right next to them. The guy didn't understand what it was. The dust began to disperse. It was the body of a huge animal. Shindo heard some noise. Someone was breaking through from inside. It was some kind of insect. The insect that came out was a centipede, Shindo saw it and was taken aback. There were small balls on her tail, and the insect itself began to step on them. The centipede lifted its tail and threw the ball at them. Yitsuyo was surprised to see the ball flying towards him. The ball turned around to attack and it turned out to be a woodlouse. She surrounded the guy's head with her shell. Etsu disappeared, the girls were in shock. The guy appeared next to the body, realizing that he was not available yet. It was an unexpectedly strong insect. Meanwhile, the centipede launched more balls. The guy forgot that he had to wait 40 seconds, but remembered that the cook's ability to recognize the name and the level of danger. He realized that there were six males behind the female centipede. Danger level D. The centipede launched the male towards Shindo, who also disappeared. 
The guy realized that by throwing the mail she was attacking from a long distance, two had already disappeared. He couldn't wait to be resurrected. Hakazaki ran away from the centipede, but Takatate asked her to trust her. Maybe she doesn't know something, but in an instant her whole life flew before her eyes, and she remembered. Eleven years ago, Takatate Yuka was five years old. Every Sunday morning she watched an anime series about a magical girl. During kindergarten, she dreamed of using magic. Soon she became an ordinary otaku, but she still loved the magical girl. She was thinking, will she see the fulfillment of a childhood dream? and I decided to roast him with the flame of a red lotus. She was smiling and spending mana. And when she realized this, at a distance of 10 centimeters from the tip of the staff, the temperature warmed up to 24 degrees. She felt warm and at the same moment a woodlouse flew into her. The girl also disappeared. The guy realized that Yuka had bought time while Kyusu was running away into the forest. Insects are not effective there. I had to go there. The guy began to revive, and the body disappeared. He was reborn. There was a centipede nearby, which he picked up, and it twisted. There was a gap in the shell. He took out a sword from the armory and plunged it into the gap of the shell. He started tearing this woodlouse apart, and it disappeared. He wanted to defeat them all, the centipede squeaked. And the guy looked at the two parts of the woodlouse, realizing that it was beautiful. He didn't understand how it happened. That the person who saved you was getting bad. It reminded him of lectures on the secret of popularity with girls. Was he that loose? He thought it was because he escorted her home. Two more woodless flew up to the guy, and he thought that even so, if he had lost his trust. At the same time, he was already holding one of the woodless in his hands and took out a knife. He wanted it back, and for Shindo to say that this is the one she likes. He is ready to wait a month, two, or even three. The guy dealt with another woodlouse. He became serious, and Shindo, just as she thought he was mysterious, Takatate realized that he was so amazing. Through the cracks in it, the force began to make its way. Atsuya was wondering if he would hear from Shindo that she liked him or something like that. He didn't know what it was, something like saved recordings, probably a video log. The third round from the beginning of the tasks, Yetsuyo asked again, and Shindo replied that images appear for a while if you touch this label. Two girls appeared, hugging each other. Shindo told no one to look. She said in the hologram that it was good to play together with her friend. But Hakazaki did not understand what that meant. Shindo asked to stay like this for a while and asked if she would mind. The girl was crying and it didn't fit with her image of the school queen, who is popular with students and teachers. He decided to take care of the centipede and bypass it before that. Shindo had just resurrected. He shouted at her to retreat, because when magic is useless here, the girl agreed and ran to hide. We've sorted out the long distances, we're moving into close combat. He didn't know how to approach her. The centipede uses its jaws and tail as weapons and its paws were positioned close to each other. Then he noticed something. It was a poisonous thorn, and he was glad that there were no more males. It was a great opportunity until she stuck her tail out. There was a blind spot on the centipede's back. She started kicking and pushing the guy from behind, but he understood that the blind spot was a good place. But if he fell, he was finished. He took out a knife and started hacking at his legs. He realized that this was a weak spot and continued. After 10 minutes, there were pieces everywhere, and the centipede was still fighting. The guy was tired that his body was missing everything. Shindo didn't understand what to do with it, and the guy suggested using it to raise the level of Hakazaki. He realized that she couldn't lift her two-handed sword, and the girl agreed. Takate didn't understand why he couldn't do it himself. Shindo replied that they couldn't use someone else's weapon and handed her her staff. The girl's hand became transparent, she could not hold the staff and this only confirmed Shindo's words. Itsuyo offered to take the weapon by Kyusu's hands. He put his hands on hers, and they were able to lift the sword. He said on the count of one, put it down. He started the countdown, three, two, one. Both had their levels raised. Task, pass 5% of the map, deliver the cargo to the radar. There were 39 days and 23 hours left. The results are reflected on a map with a radius of 50 meters around them. In total, zero hole and six hundredths percent have been completed. You will be able to explore the map more if you walk along new roads all the time. Very soon they reached the village. It was possible to explore if you go at a distance from each other. The girls supported me. Shindo wanted to be confidential. Takatate said that the girl was her senpai. The blonde said that everything was fine and that she was not afraid. Takatate, I realize that the girl is so cool, just like Magenta Magenta. Beautiful, slender, the first to start the game, survives, moving towards her goal. 
perfection itself, the girl can't compare with her. Shindo wondered what. When they got here, she was arguing with Yetsui about, because she put up with it very strangely. Takate became nervous, thinking that she wouldn't understand because she didn't know what it was like to be the target of abuse, and she always tried to behave in such a way as to avoid it. But the relationship with the girls was deteriorating, and Etsui only made things more difficult. Anyway, she thinks it will never happen again. She hated it. Shindo said that it was useless to constantly avoid meetings with her classmates. Takatate confirmed, but believed that it could bypass her. Shindo didn't understand why she thought she wouldn't be understood. The girl replied that no one was laughing at her. Shindo laughed, because the girl was half right. If she looks like that, then she thinks she has nothing to strive for. She had a goal to look better, study better, and exercise more. Thus, she gets a status in society, and enjoys it, taking everything from school life. Shindo lived separately. Her father and older brother are bandit bikers, so she didn't have to be bored. Therefore, she did not like those who judge by appearance. Takatate was surprised that she wasn't afraid. Shindo thought that she thought she had no one to help her. The girl immediately refuted her words. She wondered if Shindo was not afraid that there would be fewer friends. And Shindo replied that those who turned away and were not friends. Takatate was surprised by her coolness. She has more friends anyway. Suddenly the girl asked to marry her. Shindo laughed, not understanding her request. It was the middle of the night outside, and the blonde girl jumped up with fright on her face. She was trying to catch her breath, and Yatsui asked her if she couldn't sleep. Shindo replied by asking what he was doing. The guy replied that he was training to be able to protect them. The girl said that everything was fine and she just had a bad dream. The guy laughed that she couldn't sleep because of the dream. The girl wondered why he spoke to her in you. Atsui thought that she was embarrassed by this. Shindo, with a questioning intonation, said in what place she should be embarrassed by this. This task was one of the most mysterious. The guy with the joking voice asked if they talk about it in a dream. And the girl with the sad voice said that a brave man makes her remember a terrible dream. That wasn't what she wanted him to say. The guy remembered about the recording on which the girl was crying. The girl was waiting for his version of why she was crying. He told her that there were different reasons and maybe it was because of a terrible dream. The girl kept waiting for him to tell his version, but the guy knew very little about her. Shindo thought that she could trust him and tell him about herself, but would he regret it later? He replied that he did not, and her words made him uneasy. She has been known as brat since kindergarten and the fact is that she had Sayuri, her older sister. Cool, gentle, graceful, but sometimes ruthless. She loved her sister very much. However, when spring came, the day Sayuri became a high school student, she jumped from a high-rise building. The guy was in shock. My sister wrote two reasons in her last letter. The first is ridicule, which she did not tell anyone about, and the second. Poor Sayuri, you can't clear her reputation with this, she really was a good girl, but this reputation. It's a pity, but there's nothing you can do about the reputation though it turned out to be a good model. Someone was laughing at the youngest, who was five years old, but her parents did not come to their senses. It's a pity, but there's nothing you can do about your reputation, no matter how sorry. The girl was lifted into her arms so that she could see the piece of paper. It stunned her. Soon, after entering elementary school, he became a target for ridicule and even from teachers. She remembered one teacher who reminded her that she was the daughter of bikers, but now she should not forget that she was a student. She also remembered another one who said that she and her brother were just a headache. She asked why they were doing this to her, and they told her that they were helping her. Shindo did not believe. The teacher was always angry with her. She asked not to lie to her. Then she realized that only her supporters were friends with her. Her friends respect her for her abilities, and her enemies judge her by her first impressions. She saw a different world around her and thought about changing. She decided to become famous by changing the world she lives in. She settled the ridicule, fights and troubles. She tried her best in clubs and studies, became an amateur model in a fashion magazine. And she did it for a long, long, long time, wasting time, until all the enemies disappeared and there were more friends. In general, I made it so that no one could say it's a pity. But then this half-head appeared, who said that if she disappeared in this world, then in real life too. And at that moment there was no one to help, she was alone here. He asked me to take care of myself and friends, and successes, everything she spent a lot of time on, everything she worked on, everything she had a hand in, it disappeared in an instant. This is some kind of crap, a world in which she absolutely does not want to disappear. She wanted to have fun. The trained body stood out immediately, because every man wanted to be powerful, with strong arms. This pleased them. Atsuya wondered why they were chosen to play this game. Maybe Shindo and he missed something worthy of attention and in the end, whether it was a mistake. 
The girl grabbed the guy's hand and asked him to lend her his strength. She asked to be protected while crying. In tears, she looked at Yatsuyo, who did not know what to answer and was confused. He asked again and didn't want to lie. He wouldn't be able to protect everyone because his level was much lower than the girls. Shindo was surprised. She thought that the guys were not afraid of anything. And Yatsuyo replied that the guys were also afraid and he was no different from them. The girl offered him another option, to be his older sister. The guy thought that her roof leaked a little. But don't judge by first impressions, he realized that it seemed like Shindo's biggest enemies were her father and brother. Hakazaki and Takatate were also awake, they were listening to a private conversation. Task, the remaining time is 38 days and 19 hours. They looked at the destroyed houses and remembered the last task, where they had to save the village. Everything was neglected here. It is being destroyed by the winds, and people are not visible. It has clearly been abandoned for more than five years. There are animals, plants, and insects in this world, both demonic and normal. With everything demonic, the players are fighting. There are also people in this world. Usually they can be distinguished from the player by their clothes. And the players are also called heroes. And just like in any game, traveling merchants are always happy to meet them. One of them told them about the nearby large city-state of Kortonla. Task. The remaining time is 36 days and 22 hours. The people did not know the heroes and asked to go through the registration procedure, then they could enter. The group was surprised by the appearance of the library. There they found a man who explained everything to them. The woman asked to look at the map. They were in Kortoma, almost in the center of the mainland, and what they were looking for was located in the west of the mainland. They realized that they couldn't make it without horses. The woman realized that they had no money, and without money there were no horses. Etsui was wondering if something was supposed to be heroes, maybe she had confused something. The woman said that they did not have a religion extolling heroes, but there were great teachings of Diza Shisu and Arteros, which spoke of a world that has not known salvation for hundreds of years. Taton's teaching had its own god. In the teachings of Kadizo, he is known as the Mountain Wizard, and in the teachings of Furudus, he is worshipped as a demon. The woman said that he was known as the Great Unknown. She added that they would have a martial arts tournament the day after tomorrow. The winner will receive three horses. The guys realized that they needed to win this tournament. That was the number one goal right now. But they didn't have a plan for what to do next, because they had already signed up for the tournament. Etsu suggested raising the level, and this little remark will separate them. An attack by robbers. For the first time, a fight with a man. They started fighting. An alert has arrived, with respect from the master. Excessive self-defense was detected. The number has decreased again. Etsuya's level has dropped. He shouted at Shindo not to touch them, otherwise the level would drop. The guy also said to run away and not engage in battle. But Shindo summoned the demonic wind while the others ran further into the forest. Yatsui looked around and realized that they had broken away, but Shindo was not with them. She was captured. The guys didn't know what to do and wondered if they should go to rescue. Takatate didn't know if there was a plan other than rescue. Itsui was surprised that Hakazaki hadn't told her that they all had the same fate. In other words, if one person completes the task, the whole team will return to the real world. The well-being of everyone is not interconnected during the task. The guy was trying to prove that due to lack of time, they were going to lose, and their winning percentage was very small. Takatate viciously said that she had recently overheard him telling Yowu that he would protect her, and now he did not want to go to her rescue. She thought he had deceived her and she also realized that this was the first time she had seen trash like him. Yatsuyo calmly said that he couldn't go now for that reason, but in his life Shindo came first. She was even taller than him and was someone he would protect with his life, because she was there all alone. Therefore, he is ready to sacrifice himself and did not deceive anyone. Hakazaki was upset and did not understand what kind of person Yetsui was, because he was ready to sacrifice his life, but he did not want to go to save. He confirmed her words and trusted them completely, but this is not his way. This little phrase, Takatate asked Hakazaki to wait for her, and she said the guy was lying to them, they weren't a team anymore, and that was the decisive blow. Yetsui suggested splitting into two groups, he will go to the martial arts tournament, and the girls will go to save Shindo. And just like last time, he was left alone. Takatate didn't understand what was wrong with him. Maybe what he said was true, but it was nonsense. Hakazaki remarked with a smile that it would be better if they had already decided. After all, now there are only two in their team. The girl confirmed and asked Kyusu if Yu had revealed her secret to her. Because her stormy school activities were due to a bad reputation, thanks to stupid parents. She thought ordinary people were disgusting 
and Shindo tried to overcome adversity. Hyusu said that thanks to Yiwu, she started going to school, she was a weak, taciturn child, and Shindo helped her. Takatate confirmed that she was cool at school and heard that all the guys were talking about her. She thought again of Yatsui, who had sent them to rescue, and they tried to figure out how to act, but nothing came to mind. There were screams, the girls were also caught, and this was announced by one of the robbers. One of them said to throw them in the same cell. Task. The rest of the time is 35 days and 3 hours. The day the tournament started, the guy hoped that the girls would not be caught. He looked at his opponent and realized that he was the one to fight. The referee asked for attention, because this is the first round with Mr. Hero. He kept telling himself that salvation could not help in any way in acquiring horses and perhaps he would be hated because of it. He took out a knife from his kit and decided to get ready and rushed into battle. Shindo was upset and angry that the guy didn't come. Takate grumbled that they were now sitting here for 35 days, in her opinion. He really was the worst. Only Hakazaki believed that he would save them all. Did he do well to become independent? The referee said that this was the first round with Mr. Hero. He was thinking that he needed to win. Because saving the girls, you can't get horses. They got ready. Shindo was outraged that Yatsuyo did not come and Hakazaki thought that he would certainly save them. The fight has begun. He thought of becoming popular without knowing how to fight. He might be hated for it. He instantly fell unconscious, the fight ended before it even started. The hero disappeared, and the winner was the Knight of Kahebla. The guy screamed, he couldn't believe it, it couldn't be. He lost the horses, it was over in 5 seconds, it was impossible. But right before his disappearance, his level rose, as a result of which he became a magician and, of course, the level dropped. A magician of nature, a touch of the hand can accelerate or slow down the growth of plants, has the gift of persuasion. Mr. Hero came to life, everyone began to admire in surprise. The knight raised his visor and realized with a grin that the rumors were true, he really had been reborn. The guy realized that the girl had defeated him. The girl wondered how he was resurrected. Itsui asked to borrow horses, because he had only 35 days, and without them he could not get to Radabod. The girl asked again and said that this was the westernmost point of the mainland. She thought about it and thought that he was trading with the neighboring city. The guy refuted her words and said that he needed to do some work and asked again about the horses. He had five more days left. The girl assumed that he wanted to take over the city, although three horses would have helped him. Ask her again and I thought she thought he was a robber. A man was sitting in front of him, who thanked him for explaining the location of the robbers, but he could not give three horses, he could only borrow one. After talking to the city security, Yetsui walked with a frustrated face, repeating that he had only got one horse. There are three dots on the map, these were the robbers' lairs. That's where Kahebla and 30 soldiers are heading. The knight said that they leave at dawn, but they will arrive before noon, and she offered to make a training fight before that time. The guy awkwardly tried to refuse, but the girl said she would explain how to control him. Since there is only one horse, he will have to become a bad guy and go to the rainbow himself. Yetsui agreed to do it. He took out his weapon again. The girl asked if he had a sword, but the guy said that it would also be suitable for a sword, because she could also cut. Kahebla had a one-handed sword. She said to stand in half a turn. It was to reduce the area where you can attack. The guy tried to repeat, the girl approved. But if she had a shield, the stance would be different. But the hero did not have a sword, and in such a stance he could control it. And, since the first five seconds were behind her, she gave the opportunity to attack the guy first, as he pleased. She deftly dodged his punches, but hit the right places accurately. The winner was the girl, the reason was the guy's hand raised high. During the training, out of a hundred fights, he won three of them with luck. He thought it was a real beginner's hell. The main thing is not to die from constant cuts with a real sword. The girl said that his swordsman's talent was below average. Lying on the floor, he thought about how not to make a buff, he had been having fun here for more than a month. He also became a magician and all the indicators went down. And he also remembered about your inferiority complex. She remembered all his attempts at games. In basketball, he threw the wrong way. In football, he gave a pass to the opponent. In baseball, he did not hit a single ball. He did not master any ball game, although he repeated the basic movements many times. The girl said that the hero could not understand why he could not see her movements. He asked why, and she told him that the price of this was a thousand repetitions a day, based on the correct movements. Etsu realized that this is a lot. She told him to move slowly at the beginning. He had to twist his hand first, then his elbow, shoulder, hip. He agreed, and she continued that he should make sure not to stray from the trajectory and follow it to the end. 
Then, after two repetitions, it was necessary to increase the speed of movements, and if it strays from the trajectory, you need to repeat it again. But more slowly, the guy thought about it and realized how it should be. Early morning, day X the guy was asked about the location of the other heroes. He replied that they did not move. The warriors decided to stick to the plan. Shindo looked at the map and saw that he was heading in their direction. Hakazaki assumed that he had won the tournament, and Yu supported her words. Takatate said she would not forgive him if he lost. She would laugh at him and do nasty things. The guy with dreadlocks, the guardian, realized that the heroes had been unleashed. The other said that they were wounded and had nowhere to take their weapons, and they did not create magic by singing. They attacked with wind magic, and it makes their ears pop. The guy with dreadlocks rubbed his left ear, saying that it still hurts, and after receiving the ransom, be sure to have fun with them. He looked into the cage and saw all the girls with guns. There was a base on the field. The man completed the patrol at dawn. Suddenly he saw people hiding behind tree trunks. At the same moment, Kahabla neutralized the lookout, ordering the other warriors to attack. Everyone rushed into battle. The lookout on the tower began to ring the bell, shouting that the guards had attacked them. Robbers ran out of the shelter, attacking the warriors. Atsuo began to repeat the technique he had learned and the movement of Kahabla's sword helped, but, however, he hit the fighter in the chin. In such a situation, you can attack in this way, causing damage to the enemy and at the same time it is not visible that the experience points decrease. One of the robbers realized that they were losing and decided to open the cage. Someone understood and began to act. He started opening it and shouting that if they could, then let them run. The robbers turned at the loud roar from the cage. The warrior said that the robbers were running away. Kahabla said to take ten soldiers and run in pursuit. They had to return it any way they could. The warrior accepted the order. The guy was trying to figure out what was in the cage. He assumed it was an animal or a troll. A silhouette of a man in a crooked mask appeared from the darkness of the cage. He growled terribly and came out of prison. The guy did not understand who this giant was and was surprised that there were such people in this world. The knight calmed him down, saying that it was a berserker. He didn't need digestion. He feeds on magic power, flesh. Eating the flesh of evil spirits, a person loses his mind and becomes a berserker. She was wondering how long it would take to go on such a diet in order to lose her human appearance. After becoming a berserker, there is no turning back, and you become like evil spirits. Without thinking, you attack everyone who turns into a puppet. Losing flesh due to the flesh of evil spirits, becoming aggressive, wanting only magical power. The berserker had already tried to attack the warriors, but the guy was surprised that he was holding a long sword with one hand. He swung at the warriors, striking, the warriors flew away. They fell to the ground. Atsui stood in shock. He did not understand what it was and what kind of power it was. Kahabla ordered everyone to disperse. He will do it. The berserker was swinging for another blow, but he only cut the girl's shield. The guy stood with his mouth open when he saw that the monster had cut the shield in half. The girl was taking her sword out of its scabbard. She headed towards the berserker, trying to get him with a big tearing sword. The warriors turned around and saw that Kahabla had taken out her big sword, the one. She would fight to the end and at the same time asked if he liked it. Etsu was coming in a lot of shock. The girl screamed that she was the daughter of a knight and she liked to fight and liked to cut slices. Now she has met a big piece of meat. One of the warriors wondered how she motivated herself. This was the piece she wanted to chop up. The guy was trying to figure out if they were fighting on equal terms, although the berserker was crushing her with brute physical force. Despite their different physiques, their stamina is almost equal. It was cool. Kehabla will soon run out of strength. She needed help urgently. The berserker knocked her sword out of her hands, and the girl fell to the ground. The monster swung to strike, but then it jumped up, holding the berserker's sword with a kitchen knife. It worked. He saw the trajectory moving. He saw. His power increased so quickly and his weapon broke. He needed to come up with something. He remembered that he had a weapon, a skill, and the magic of nature. With his power of persuasion, he tried to summon her. He tried to convince the berserker that there was a killer behind him. The monster turned in search and tried to attack. At that moment the guy plunged a knife into the side of the monster, with exclamations that he was led. The monster grabbed the guy by the head and attacked him with a sword. The guy realized that he had to disappear again. He saw that it was the girl who cut him up, again. At this time, the girl was flying towards the monster in an attacking position. She destroyed the monster with a single swing of her sword. In the basement, meanwhile, the voices of the guards who had found the door to the secret basement could be heard. Someone said that he was uneasy because of what was happening upstairs. But they won't be found there, the door is hidden. Two robbers were defeated, the cage opened and Yatsuyo tried to explain himself. 
he came to rescue them and asked for forgiveness for losing in the tournament in the first round and got only one horse. That's why I came with help. The girls viciously grumbled that he had lost and the guy offered to go to him alone. Roughly speaking, you can use a cart to go together. And I wish the rest of you good luck in completing the first part of the task, completing the 5% map. The guy said the horses were alive too, and if they died of fatigue halfway through, then there was no point in going on a trip. Then Kahibla came in, who was pleasantly surprised to see all the characters. The girl introduced herself to the rest of the characters. She has several people under her command, and taking a long vacation, she can go with them to the place. She thinks they'll get to know each other on the way. The girl continued that two rewards would be a plus, the first being that she would give them horses to travel to Radabon. That was great news. And the second one is that she will give sword lessons to all four of them. And then, everything will be fine. She was an excellent swordsman. The girls were shocked and glared at each other. The guy said that, in my opinion, they have no other alternative. Pain is provided for a month. That delicious pain of cutting. Kahibla joyfully jumped up the stairs saying that they were returning to the Pope with a report. Another necessary thing in this assignment is a cargo that no one knows anything about. Shindo was trying to figure out how to control the horse. Ikotri's horse, omnivorous, moves on two legs. It is mainly used with a saddle equipped with a wheel. Kahibla wondered what their business was in the borderlands. Merchants chattered that people who approached the city disappeared. She also wondered what they were talking about with her father. The guy said they met. The girl smiled maliciously and lowered her visor, and they set off. The journey to the west has begun. Will they find out what kind of cargo they need? Task, go through 5% of the map, deliver the cargo to the radar. The rest of the time is 33 days and 23 hours. Hakazaki sat with a sad face and looked at the sky, sitting apart from everyone, traveling to Radabod, to the western edge of the mainland. They slept in a cage on rags. Hakazaki opened her eyes and screamed along with the girls. One of the dreadlocked caretakers appeared above them. He was carrying a dagger that was approaching the girl. She was scared, and the man was licking his lips. They couldn't defend themselves against the brute force of the girl in any way. The girls were standing with weapons in their hands, and the guards wanted to have fun with them so much. Hakazaki was very scared, her body was trembling. She was waiting for Yetsui's return. There were shouts outside the door. The robbers were uneasy, they wanted to surrender. The other said that they would not be found here. Hakazaki remembered that they were visible on the map and would they not find this entrance on it. She was glad that Yetsui had come to save them. There was a crash of a broken door, and the robbers were neutralized by the warriors. The girl was delighted, but she was still scared. The defeated man lay with an angry face looking at the warrior. He was pierced by a spear, he made terrible noises and red liquid began to flow from his mouth and then from his nose. The robber let go of his last tears and lay unconscious. Hakazaki covered her eyes with her hands. She had just seen how a person was deprived of the most valuable thing in a second. The man who attacked her disappeared painfully. The warriors said that they had discovered three heroes. The door from their underground prison opened and the girls were terrified. Dozens of bodies lay on the ground. The thick smell of red liquid spilled on the ground hit them in the nose. Kahibla saw the hut and ordered it to be burned but before that to look for gold. The soldiers carried the jewels and gold into the cart. There was some good armor there. She said they would split it equally later. It was night outside. Iwu asked Kyusu if she had calmed down. She replied that her heart was a little uneasy. Shindo sat down next to him, reminding him about the pile of bodies and the fact that Yetsui apparently didn't care. Hakazaki agreed. The guy was cooking dinner. The girl remembered that he had the 10th level of a cook, and he managed to get a pot from somewhere. But if she eats now, she will vomit. With such success, she will become slim in this world. Kyusu supported me. Iwu said that it was necessary to eat. It was Kyusu's turn, and she was thinking that they had been released from the underground prison and returned to the city. In the afternoon, they left the city and headed west. The horses are cared for and guarded, so they sleep peacefully at night. Speaking of horses, they were similar to them only in name. Cute, with big eyes. And also, after meeting with Kakabla, he spent all his time with her. Hakazaki was in pain. The knight did not believe that she was so weak, surviving in a world of brute force without having a soul mate. Born with a weak body, she did not like force and considered the people who used it disgusting. Why does she have nowhere to use brute force in modern Japan? And she wants the person she likes to know it. 
Etsui could heal simple wounds with the magic of nature. Kahibla asked her later to explain how he does it. During the treatment, he also gained experience points. He was pleased with this, and he asked everyone who was injured to tell him right away. Hyusu also wanted to have the power of a healer. It annoyed her that the knight was always with him. It wasn't fair, she met him first, anyway, she'll beat her. Hakazaki didn't like physical education. Doctors forbade her to play sports, so she did not find friends, because there were no such people in the class. Due to her poor health, she was practically unable to do anything. And since there was no strength, it was necessary to find yourself in something else. I didn't go into the financial sector because it's hard to talk. She confessed to her parents that she wanted to be a pharmacist. You need to study at an institute with a pharmacological department for six years, and she will try her best. In her dreams, she was walking, idling on her day off, when she got from modern Japan into the world of brute force. She was healthy and that was the most important skill. All the feelings have changed. What was impossible in that world became possible in this one. The girl was crying, she made a mistake, and she remained a weakling. And I thought about it, that it would take a lot of time. The rest of the time is 28 days and 14 hours. She fought with a knight and thought that she wanted to possess the magic of nature. The rest of the time is 26 days and 15 hours. She already understood that even after so much training, she would not become a warrior. Hyusu was holding a sword in her hand, and then she saw a goblin in a red liquid. She stuck a sword into someone. Anger began to boil in her veins, and the girl began to cry and apologize. She looked at her hands. They were all red. This sticky feeling left on my hands is disgusting. She asked Kahibla why she likes to fight. The girl decided to answer her. Learning how to wield a sword on the living is priceless. And the more, the better. First, the hard tendons. In order to destroy them more easily, you need to cut them. The living are their goal. In battle, moving into the thick of it, cutting his way with a blade, destroying enemies into pieces, one by one, making the living different. Now she'll realize that she did the right thing with that goblin. That feeling in her arms. This is the highest bliss. Looking at her hands, she remembered that feeling. Kahibla learned this from her father. Her father also trained her older brother. They say that the best practice is with a live opponent on real swords. Apparently, it changed her mind. Generally speaking, a frostbitten family. The girls asked in surprise. But back in Hakazaki's life, her parents sacrificed everything for her. Images of Yatsugo and Shindo appeared in front of her. She did something like a reassessment to these two, reconsidering her approach to evaluating people. She wanted to fulfill her dream and return to a normal life. Kyusu stood next to the goblin and apologized, and for that it was necessary to fight. The rest of the time is 15 days and 5 hours. Shindo drew Kahibla's attention to what she saw. The knight saw the soldiers who were attacked by monsters. She wondered what kind of troops they were. They had several civilians and children. Takatate saw this, and the knight turned to her and asked again. Hakazaki wanted to help them. Itsuyo was unhappy with her suggestion. After all, they didn't have time. They can't help them. They are completely unfamiliar to them and they had to get around them. The girl and the guy exchanged disapproving glances. Kyusu decided to ask to be released. She could handle it alone. Shindo began to object with displeasure, thinking that she was not thinking at all. Itsui said that they had no reason to help them. She apologized and said that hadn't she said that people in life needed to be helped, save for no reason. She is tired of being a child who fails. That's why she won't give up. The guy was amused. A child who fails, her life has become unimportant to her. He realized that she was getting tough. He decided to take part in this adventure too. Shindo asked again, and asked how the rescue would help their main task. He replied that maybe this group was going to raid a bot. The guy said that he and Hakazaki were heading there, and the whole train was moving on. As far as possible, we must leave and not return. He asked Kyusu if she was ready, she confirmed, and they rode the cart towards the battle. There were many monsters ahead of them. They arrived, but almost all of them had already been destroyed. The wolf said that the heroes had arrived. He realized that they were kobolds, there were three of them, and they were much stronger than the royal soldiers. A group of kobolds, beastmen, danger level E. There are eight levels from G to S in the royal regular army. An army man has half the capabilities of an ordinary person because of his experience in combat. Perhaps the chance of victory was slightly increased. But this is not accurate. Of course, combat capability cannot be expressed in digital form, since everything is approximately important. These three were three times stronger than him. They will take them on themselves, and the fighters must cover them. The fighters accepted the task. The heroes ran into battle. The battle began. Yitsuyo had a frying pan and a kitchen knife in her hands. The hackers were destroyed. It was useless because they were stronger than them and outnumbered them. 
This is not their battle. The guy decided to use the magic of nature. He did the same thing with the berserker again. But it didn't work. The guy thought that the wolf didn't understand the words. I guess I'll have to switch off all the time. The wolf bit Yatsuya's hand, and the wolf turned so that the guy was dragged after him. The guy was very close to the wolf. Etsu poked the wolf in the eye, he howled, and the guy fell to the ground. He tried to grab the wolf by the legs and it worked, the wolf missed. The guy knocked down the wolf and raised a kitchen knife over him, but the wolf bit him on the neck. Etsui was passed out. The fighters were running towards the wolves. He kept saying that it didn't help again. The warrior was fighting with a wolf, and Kyusu did not understand why she was here. There was no point in fighting if she couldn't defend. Hakazaki resurrected and appealed to the wolf that he did not destroy her. The wolf immediately ran towards the girl. She said that we'll see who's who. The girl chose a sword from the weapons list. It didn't make sense, but she stabbed the wolf. Itsui was amazed, because she let her guard down and immediately before the collision took out a long sword. In an instant, the heavy sword that she couldn't lift brought victory. The girl started crying and apologizing to the wolf's body. The guy didn't understand why she was constantly asking for forgiveness. Did she really feel guilty? But the main thing was that everything was fine. There are soldiers there, the guy finally revived. He began to call the wolf, calling him a dog. The wolf was angry. The guy started running away from him, and the wolf ran after him. They ran up to the cart and one of the warriors swung to attack. The warrior defeated the last wolf. It was day, people were lying on the ground. Atsui began to use the magic of nature, accelerating healing at the cellular level. He could touch the wound to speed up healing. Under the conditions, the departed cannot be revived. A nutrient is needed for regeneration, rest is necessary. The blood of demons. The magician can use the bride's corpse and blood to restore magical power while restoring mana. Everyone was lying in a pile, both soldiers and civilians. Six people survived. The warrior thanked the guy for everything and asked where his group was going. They were Dioku's regular troops. They were following the king's orders, transporting pagans. The girls turned around and were surprised. They have banned the religion of Arteros. These people have committed a great sin. They think that even more adherents of Arteros are hiding in the city. This city is an international port city of Radabod. It's comfortable, located on a hill, and they'll clean it up. Cask, deliver the cargo to Radabod. What kind of cargo is unknown and to whom? The girls did not understand. Did they have to transport people sentenced to disappearance? Takate didn't want to go. Heretics, children, it sounded like nonsense. To make a delivery of heretics. Yes, no. He was thinking about what to do. The phenomenon is more just. The man said they were soldiers of the Dioku state. Will they help deliver the condemned? They were following the king's orders to transport pagans. The destination is Radabot. The girls stood shocked. They didn't know what to do. Children were also sentenced to destruction. The knight asked the man if Dioku had power over the western region and whether he had the right to sentence non-citizens. The man wondered how she knew and asked her to tell him her name. The girl introduced herself as a knight of Kahebla from the city-state of Court Nilo and if he mistook her for an ordinary soldier, then he needed to rub his eyes and watch his tongue. The man smiled maliciously, remembering about the small state at the intersection of trade roads, and also realized that he was impolite. He was also a Camelot soldier, the chief bodyguard of King Dioku and the commander of his squad. The girl thought that they were complete ignoramuses in military affairs. His group was defeated by kobolds and if it wasn't for them, they would all have disappeared. He looked at her menacingly, and she returned his gaze with a grin. Both warriors reached for their weapons as Shindo appeared between them, asking them to stop. Kahebla said that the Dioku kingdom seeks to take over the mainland, and rule by dictatorship. She was going to bury him right there. The man replied that it was unforgivable to make fun of King Dioku. He will destroy anyone who inconveniences the king. Shindo asked for help from Yatsuyo, who asked her to wait. The guy called a general council and called the heroes to him. He tried to restore the boy and started a conversation. First of all, he thought that he needed to stop insulting each other and think about what to do next. A must-have event. This expression is used in games and adventure that is bound to happen. Moving their route to the end point, they could not accidentally meet them at the scene of the attack. There is a high probability that the cargo in this task may be sentenced. Therefore, by helping the soldiers deliver the prisoners to Radabod, they will complete two tasks at a time. This is the first option, but there is a second one. In theory, it may also include the delivery of children and those who may die. Speaking of this, they need to take care of their lives and help the child. This is half of the required task. There is a third option. They need to choose a route based on the game template. Shindo asked how it was. The main idea of a multi-story is that the ending depends on the choice, so the story is created. 
There were several paths in the task. If you choose the fourth option not to help the soldiers, then you need to look for a new cargo to complete the task. If the third one, then the delivery of prisoners is a 50-50 chance, and it is still unknown that they did not make a mistake with the cargo. Therefore, his opinion is that we need to choose a third one and help with the delivery of prisoners. At the same time, they could complete the second task. Just speaking of probability, it is quite dangerous to refuse the army now. He asked what they would do. Talkatate had an idea. Probably, delivery is delivery but to raid Abad, and there you can help them board a ship and send them to your country. Atsui confirmed and said that this is her one version of the story. Shindo assumed that they decided to help these people. They confirmed and said it would be better this way. Deciding to cooperate for now, they all went on together. The boy never regained consciousness. First of all, we need information. Speaking of which, three adepts survived. The man thanked me for the invitation. He's a fafuser, a preacher. I came here from the Izea mainland. The preacher told them his story. He promised to tell everything if they would help the boy escape. Atsuyo cheered up, thinking that now there will be an original story. Will it open a multi-story if you choose another option? The Artero's adepts are outsiders from another continent who are persecuted and destroyed in Dioku. Therefore, they will not be able to receive protection in Raidabad either. Atsuyo understood why the cult of Artero's is banned in the country. He was interested in social classes. His abilities depend on the caste in which he was born. But there is no such thing in the culture of Arteros. They are all equal and help each other. The current king wanted to colonize neighboring small countries, expanding his possessions. They also attach great importance to serving God and protecting the people. The guy thought that history was repeating itself. It was like the oppression of Christianity in Japan. He asked why she was being chased. Hakazaki asked why this happened. She was annoyed by the missionary work. Shindo and Yitsuyo looked at her in surprise. The man sighed sadly and looked at the ceiling. In this case, the motive was that in this country no one except the king is revered, and people who believe in God and the king began to move away from each other. After all, everyone has their own worldview. Conflicts began to arise among the neighbors, and these skirmishes began to intensify. The man said that, responding with aggression to aggression. The executions continued, and people began to destroy each other's churches and relics. The destruction of the statues of the kings of Dioku became a decisive move, then they began to officially prosecute, and executions were introduced. Shindo awkwardly said that they had destroyed the statues for nothing. This is a painful business. The god Dezesius is simple and peaceful, and they preach the love of God. But with the help of the Bible, the adherents failed to achieve peace and mutual understanding. Then their faith was divided into peaceful people and not. Etsui thought it was something new. Since religion A and religion B appeared, extremists appeared, and the likelihood of conflicts increased, but immediately realized that he was wrong. He realized that they were very similar. Takatate thought that this was nonsense, all this religion and kings, and the guy realized that they were next. At night, the guy turned to Camelot. He asked why they had gone on a dangerous journey to Radabad to execute the adherents of Arteros there. The man answered to stop them. They came from the mainland of Isaiah. For them the rainbow is like a front door. They were a danger due to the increasing number and hostile attitude of the missionaries. The main task was to weaken them. The map showed the state of Dioku, the territory of Aria, the city of Radabad, the mainland of Isaiah. The king invaded the Serpaum city-state 16 years ago. The boy shouted words of support towards dad. He shouted that dad was the strongest. And the father replied that he would not let them down. The ratio of the armies was 18 to 1, which foreshadowed a guaranteed victory in the battle. Only 300 people disappeared. The boy was glad that dad had won. A man was walking towards him on crutches, all bandaged up. The boy said sadly, dad. However, Dioku is ruled by the fifth dynasty of kings. The current soldiers were provided with a household and servants. If a father or son disappears or is injured, a servant is also waiting. This is the first phase for uniting the country. She is realizing this goal and intends to continue to engage in colonization. This is his house and he will clean it up. He wanted to save the weak. The king is kind to all people and wants to create a unified state. He was not going to change his mind. The Brotherhood of Arteros must be erased from the mainland. The man asked if he was explaining it clearly. Etsu thought about the fact that the man is straight as a stick. Shindo said he went too far with the show execution. They were sitting by the fire. The man was surprised by the words about the king. The girl did not consider him kind. Takatate thought that a country with a dictatorship was bad. But the guy thought that he had not told everything yet. The guy and the girls were very surprised. Camelot also began to scream. Didn't he clearly explain that he would not allow insulting the king? He would destroy anyone. 
Talkatate turned to Yuwu, trying to prove that this was the case. She kept talking until the game was over, they couldn't be destroyed. Shindo asked me to cover my mouth. Atsuyo asked me not to pay attention to what she was saying. He couldn't remember why she was so turned on. The man asked to explain what it means. The guy began to explain that everyone understands this in their own way. The king, too, in general, can be wrong. It's better to keep your mouth shut with the royal guards. They could pass through the mountains in seven days, there will be five more left. The man said that if they went around, then to Emranbu, a country that dominates Radabod, they could be discovered, they had to go to the mountains. Yatsuyo reflected on the fact that he had behaved suspiciously the night before last. They talk too much. We want to reach the goal in 12 days. They looked at the map and tried to choose a safe route. The remaining time is 13 days and 6 hours. There is a danger of being noticed if you get too close to Maramba. The first plan, a tunnel dug in ancient times, seems to be quite old, and it is unknown whether it is possible to pass through it. Plan 2, the shortest path in the changeable mountains. The remaining time is 11 days and 20 hours. The warrior and Yatsuyo were pushing the cart because it got stuck. One of the warriors asked to pay attention to something. They entered the cave. The guy had a strange feeling. The man said that he was made by a civilization that lived a thousand years ago. A cave with tricky mechanisms, so no unnecessary movements after they enter. One of the warriors asked them to wait there for a while while they turned off the mechanism. There was a cliff in front of the group, in which there was a large mechanism, it was very large. The water wheel began to move the mechanism, and, consequently, the ladder was moving towards them. Itsugo turned to the cheers. Someone was outraged because something had happened. As it turned out, the entrance to the tunnel was closed. The warriors shouted and asked to open it. The guy realized that the tunnel was closed because of the mechanism. This is a test of the lords of heroes, they can pray to their god. To religions alien to them, he did not want to tolerate leniency from them. And strong monsters settled inside this tunnel, so the man asked to take care of himself. Camelot shouted to his soldiers to move out. One of the warriors did not understand how the heroes were. The girls started shouting angrily towards the warriors. Atsui was angry too. The probable load took away and the time also took away. They needed to figure out where the exit was. They forcibly entered the dungeon. How unfortunate, because they gave him their secret. A cave made by ancient people. The knight stepped onto the ramp that had fallen into place, everything was fine. She thought it was a shortcut. The girl will go ahead and take on three people. Shindo was wondering what was in there. Kahabla said it was okay to go. The group was inspired and immediately tried to pass. Yetsuo immediately ran into the cave. The next barrier is the huge hammers. Yetsu must prove that he is worthy of the title of hero. He must overcome them. It won't be easy, there were traps everywhere. Etsui should try his best. There were drawings on the pillars. The hammers swung in different directions. Kahabla went first. So far, everything has been going great. Task. The remaining time is 11 days, 14 hours. The remaining time is 10 days and 23 hours. Etsuyo asked that they go on without him. In an instant, very suddenly, Shindo wasn't sure what he was saying. A third room appeared. The girls were standing in front of a room in which the walls were moving. They moved out and moved. Etsui didn't like it. Here one of the walls began to slide out. Shindo said two randomly moving walls, about 200 meters long. She didn't understand at all how they were synchronized. Hakazaki supported, because there is practically no gap between the walls. Takatate said it would take 40 seconds with the cart. By the sound, it is believed that it works as a scaring shield from birds. Odosi is a bamboo tube that, when filled with water, beats against a stone, filling with water. At first, they realized that Yetsui had gone on a flight. After the resurrection, the girls shouted to the guy how he was doing. The girls were shocked. He was at the bottom of the pit and apologized for not being able to get out. Shindo said that the height of the building is about 8 stories high, there is nothing to help him, and it's also pretty creepy here. She thinks it will be difficult for you to recover here all the time of the quest. One of the walls moved out again. They need to finish this assignment. Shindo hoped that everything would be fine with the guy. They need to survive for 10 days and decide if they need a wagon with cargo while it only delays. But first they had to figure out how to get out of there. Kyusu said that it was necessary to calculate the time of the first stop of the wall, and I asked them to look at it, because they acted on time repeating themselves. The near wall is 60, 15, 45, 30, and in reverse order. The far wall is 3 times 10, 20, 2 times 10, 20, 30, 10, 2 times 20, 10, 30, and 10, 22 times. Shindo understood everything. The walls continued to slide out and move. Shindo heard that the sound was changing and the numbers, in her opinion, did not add up. 
The girl realized that this was not the interval of movement, but the total number of seconds. There were several forces moving the trap. There were two levers, one moving after 60 seconds and the second after 75 seconds. It was a fantasized drawing of the mechanism. Well, the far wall had three levers of 30 seconds, 40 seconds and 50 seconds each. Hakazaki confirmed that 30, 40, 50, 60 and 75 had exactly the same range of movement of the levers. Hyusu realized that the walls had been moving for 600 seconds. In other words, 600 seconds is a complete cycle. First, they have to make a timetable by painting over the time of movement of the levers in black. She thinks she can set aside a time that is not suitable for the transition for clarity, and they will also mark the movement of each lever separately. They will also paint over the time when the far wall blocks the passage and here from 190 to 230 for 40 seconds. And from the 540th to the 600th, there is a transition point within 60 seconds. The girls started counting down the time. After everything came together, they happily shouted that they had done it. Shindo said they would go to the next transition point. After 570th seconds, the girl went quickly to the crossing. She was able to run and the girls were happy. Shindo thought about it and asked Yetsui if he was there. The guy confirmed it. The girl said that she had moved on. The guy thought that after the fall he had some food and a torch with him. He was thinking how to get out and there seemed to be no way out, there were only bones around. Takatate asked, will they leave like this and do nothing to help? Hakazaki said that we should try to finish the threesome. Shindo supported them because they were at the finish line and could come up with something later. They have to do it. There is practically no gap between the bricks. The approximate size of the brick is 70 by 140 centimeters. The guy couldn't think of anything. He couldn't get from the bottom. He couldn't get from the side either. He was trying to insert the knife in some interesting way. But if you hollow out a place with enough leg size, then you can get out. He looked up and saw how much longer he had to crawl. Gradually knocks out the bricks, moves up, knocking out the next one and so 30 meters. He knew that he would come to life, but it was still scary. At first, the ascent took six hours. The only light source is the torch has gone out, and even with his eyes open he can't see anything. Dense darkness has enveloped him. Despite this, he trusted the sensations of his hands, and continued to work. The eyes were no longer needed. He was able to concentrate with his eyes closed. This is a double fear. In the complete darkness, various thoughts began to creep into Itsuya's head. Memories of a loner, using memories to drown out fear in order to see the light again. After a few dozen falls down, he lost count. Finally, Yatsuyo Yusuke returned to the ranks. He started laughing because he thought he wouldn't get in. Master, he got out. The girls looked at the map and saw that it was moving. Shindo was also surprised. Takatate asked how he got in. Task. The rest of the time is 10 days and 5 hours. After the ascent, the need for light disappeared. Moving by touch, along the wall, using a map. The map shows the place where it crashed many times. His strength is leaving him, since the last time he slept was 40 hours ago, and he saw the light 30 hours ago. The guy saw a glowing tile on the floor it was a magazine. He offered his hand to the magazine. He saw Hakazaki crying. She said that he had served her family for five years and three months. The warrior by Musback alone was worth three soldiers to Dioku. He was a great slasher, and surely, sometime else with him, she would have visited places similar to these. Kahabla must have said it. The guy felt sorry for him. From that moment on, Yetsui became even more lonely. He recalled the moments he spent time with this warrior. He's friendless again becoming an outsider, like three years ago, even more tightly closing the door to the heart. He looked back at the warrior and thanked him, and also said goodbye, which made him even more withdrawn. The rest of the time is eight days, 21 hours. The sun was shining, which was making its way through the cave. Shindo fought the bats, she can, she'll take away the key he's holding. There was a high bridge in front of them again, with a cliff under it, and there were different types of monsters on it, from bats to some skeletons. The girls fought the bats as well as the warriors. Kakabla did not want to admit it, but of the four of them, Shindo was the best at destroying bloodsuckers, the girl thanked. She played tennis for almost two years, but quit. I even participated in tennis competitions, there were the same small balls. The girl destroyed several more bats. The knight asked her why she left. Shindo remembered how the coach said that if she wanted to achieve something, she needed to aim for the top eight. He hoped she wouldn't lose the match because she only lost the first game. The reason is defective magic. Because of this, the body's abilities decrease. It was all the master's fault, it's a shame. The girl smiled and said that she would definitely continue in high school. One of the monsters pierced through Kahabla. He made a hole in her. Shindo saw this and was surprised. 
just like the knight herself. She fell down the cliff, all the girls screamed trying to get to her friend. Iwu repeated that she did not believe it was impossible. A serious opponent stood in front of her. The girl noticed it too, she got the 10th level. Immediately everything except the master froze for a while. The girl was surprised by the 10th level and realized that she would get other skills. The master congratulated her on her 10th level and began to spin the roulette of professions. Last time, she was a magician. For the girl, the seconds dragged on for a very long time. It was necessary to help Cahabla as soon as possible. The master spun the roulette wheel and at the same time said, I twist, I twist, I want to cheat. She became. After getting a profession, he pressed the button and time went on again. He started the time, the girl decided to go into close combat. She threw her chest at the enemy, being a swordsman. The man said that Shindo Yiwu, a swordsman warrior, fighting in the arena in the cave, Shindo began to counterattack. She screamed at him to disappear. The girl struck at the monster with such anger, she realized that his skin was not breaking through. The monster immediately wanted to attack the girl. He hit her so hard that her arm broke and the girl was thrown back. She tried to stop, but she was already hanging over the cliff, the stones were falling down, and she held it. The girls were surprised, one of the warriors screamed. Kahibla fell into the water and was already lying at the bottom. The girls opened the room and thought it was there. It was the fifth room. They looked around the room and thought about what it was, they assumed it was an arena. It really was a room with an arena. Shindo noticed something. Kahibla understood what it was. There was a gargoyle that moved. It was an artificial organism created. Liquid stored in a glass flask is poured into it, reviving the mummy. Thousands of years have passed, and it still works. The knight was disappointed to say that it still works. The lost technology of the ancients. The monster broke the chains and jumped down. The monster's eyes lit up. Shindo did her best to climb back into the arena. The wound should have recovered in 20 or 15 seconds. These two are not fighters. And if Makua was wounded, he would not recover, so he could not fight. There was nowhere to go. They were surprised that Yatsuya was already so close. It was necessary to buy some more time. There was a fourth room. The guy was surprised that it became a little lighter. He sarcastically said that it was just wonderful, because the fourth room was a maze. Thanks to the girls who passed earlier, he could walk along the map with the indicated road, wanting to see his team, which is also moving forward without sleep and rest. He didn't have much time left. She thought that all lives were fair, not equal. Equal, this is when he is evaluated, as in figure skating or gymnastics. But the cost of life is the points received at birth, as a result of which, it became possible to divide by ranks. He came to the question of who he was and kept repeating the same thing. The guy didn't understand why he was, who he was. The girl's left arm has been restored. Bats immediately tried to attack her, they got her. She was trying to find her hat and shield. Shindo put on her own outfit. She noticed the wound on the monster, and thought she could get it. Or Kahela couldn't reach him with her two-handed weapon. The monster had a skeleton on top of the flesh. Speaking of the skeleton, there was something during training. She was a girl, but strong men couldn't beat her. Among the girls of her country, she is the second most powerful. If we take the overall rank, then she is about 17th place, considering that the number of female warriors compared to men is 1 in 50 or less. Kahibla asked how the difference in strength could be surpassed. The girl replied that you can win with the skill of a swordsman. The knight agreed. The swordsman's target is weak points. Armor and bones are hard and poorly cut through. On the battlefield, death on the edge of the sword. So it was possible to defeat the enemy, instantly killing or inflicting a fatal wound. The girl also asked if she knew where to hit. Shindo assumed it was in the neck. The knight said that it was correct in principle, but there were still many weak points in the armor. The areas are joints on the armor and the joints and an eye slit on the helmet. And also the heart. At first glance it is both behind the armor and behind the bones. But if you bypass the protection from above or below and pierce it, it was necessary to pierce the top in the area of the collarbones. If from below, then through the diaphragm. There are two points where there is no protection, because these are places of many connections. Shindo, I remembered what I need between the ribs. She hoped that his heart arrangement was the same as that of a human. Two places to get it, otherwise it will not be destroyed. The girl gathered her thoughts and got down to business. The monster and the girl joined the second attack. Shindo was trying to approach him from the right side. And now the place of sword insertion became available to her. She decided and screamed and tried to hit him. But the monster immediately caught up with her, hitting her on the arm. The hand with the sword no longer belonged to the girl. The monster was faster and stronger. The girl was in a lot of pain. The monster swung again. His sword hand was reaching for the girl. In an instant, Yuu quickly covered herself with a shield with her hand. The sword arm hit the shield just right. 
the monster drove his hand into the ground with his blow. The girl managed to jump away and was behind him. She grabbed one of the monster's vertebrae with her feet, and by making the amplitude turn, she turned over and was already lying back to back with the monster. A little later, she was already sitting on his shoulders, trying to catch the sword. The girl grabbed her sword hand and held it up. The girl was very angry and swung to strike. She plunged the sword into the heart. The monster's eyes lit up. The meaning of existence is everywhere. Why the game chose him. With the proposed lineup of players, forcing them to act, randomly distributing professions with the help of roulette. If you think about it, there's only one possible answer. He has to become a leader, to take control into his own hands, because he was the best at strategy. The girls and the warrior turned around and saw Itsuyo, and the guy saw Shindo lying down and a monster was standing over her. The girl saw him and was delighted, calling him her favorite. But he was walking too slowly. The monster fell from a severe injury. Itsuyo was surprised, saying slowly. He understood what it was. The warrior ran up to the guy, shouting Kahibla's name and remembering her last moments. Itsuyo started looking for her with his eyes. He didn't see her. The warrior said that she fell down where the sword was lying. The guy asked how long ago it happened. He was told that about a minute ago. The guy immediately ran towards the sword. Everyone was surprised. The guy ran two fingers in a circle and jumped into the abyss. Memories flew by. Shindo and Takatate said a little irritably that they had run to rescue Kahebla. Hakazaki was glad that he had finally made up his mind. He was flying down and landed in the water. He held his breath and saw the knight lying on the bottom. The reunion of the group, the victory over the gargoyle, the rescue of Kahebla. Yetsui managed to find them everywhere. She remembered the battle in the cave. And then, she opened her eyes and saw the joyful face of a warrior who was praising God for bringing her to her senses. The girl wondered if she was alive. She was in pain. The surviving Kahebla, with a scar, is proof of a real warrior. The magic of nature accelerated cell renewal, which made it possible to quickly repair the wound. At that time, Yatsuya's mana was approximately 1,400. After healing the wound to a depth of 2 mm, reducing the incision by 5 cm and stopping the blood, he ran out of all mana. He started treating a serious wound without having enough experience. In the room with the arena, the vanished civilization put a huge amount of mana and human blood into a liquid that resurrected and was the driving force of man-made creatures. Surely, if they found out about it, they would officially register it and make it a world heritage site. Of course, I emptied everything to restore my strength. That dose of mana was about 3,200,000. In general, repeating the procedure 2,300 times, he used up all the mana. As a result, at the end of the treatment, he fainted and fell asleep. And it is still in this state. Kahibla turned her head towards the lying guy. She wondered how anyone could be so tired to sleep with their eyes rolled open. The warrior said that he had to go and that he would call the others. Kahibla closed his eyes and thought. She began to approach his lips. The girl removed her hair a little and kissed the guy. Shindo, Hakazaki and Takate looked into the cart and said, Oops. Shindo asked what she was doing. She was embarrassed and said she wasn't doing anything. I also thought I should ask if they were dating. Yuu waved her hands and denied it. The knight asked again and said that she would try it with him, because they are similar. The girl replied that he was completely devoted to the case. The girl did not understand what kind of person she was and how far she could go in business. She didn't care how far or where she went in doing her duty. The highest reward was disappearing in battle. Her country is in the center of a large continent, but it is small in number. That's why we have to hire knights. A martial arts tournament was held three times a year. If you are strong, it doesn't matter who you are, a guy or a girl. They have 3,000 mercenaries. There are more than a hundred families of famous knights, and she is the 70th in rank. Her father is the second in rank, her older brother is the eighth, and her younger brother is the 15th. Say what you like, but she's not their equal. No matter how hard she tried, the difference could not be reduced. Kyusu asked if she was camping because of this. The knight confirmed it, but primarily because of the thirst for battle. The girls were shocked by her response. She decided to change the environment to gain potential and combat experience. Her father said that every fight teaches something new. In other words, cut while you're alive. The girls wondered how her teacher was. Takatate said, after all, what do those words mean? What kind of person am I? It was her. The girl thought if you're wrong, when you want to be like your brothers and father. Kahibla didn't think so, but the girls began to cheer her up. They thought so. Kyusu asked her not to be afraid to be herself. The girl hesitantly asked again, because she did not know that it was possible. But the girls calmed her down, saying that it was necessary. Itsui began to open his eyes and move. The guy jumped up and screamed in fright. He started saying it was a misunderstanding. 
The girls immediately turned around. Shindo said he scared her, but she was smiling. Tyusu and Takatate did not understand what had happened. Yetsui sat up, rubbing his head. He did not understand how long he had slept and where they were. His thoughts were on the cargo, and he wondered what kind of cargo they had. Shindo asked if he meant the goods. Yetsuyo replied that he was talking about their precious cargo, which they had to deliver. He wondered what time it was. He realized that he had overslept for a long time. Hakazaki said if there were any other thoughts or if it was a trick question. She also said that it could still look like cargo. Etsu said their cargo is their time. It seemed to him that everything was ambiguous here. Perhaps the Japanese language limits his thinking, but he doesn't understand what kind of people from the future are and what this hiring is for. Yetsui said that yes, when the three of them were together, they were coping with the request of the village. Honestly, he wondered if he had pushed his problem onto them, and he also assumed maybe it was a clue. He remembered the village headman with no name, the village also had no name, and the errands were strange. So, you can find a couple more villages that should appear if you approach the last house. He asked what the girls thought about it. They will complete the quests of these villages, or someone else's personal ones. They already knew how to destroy goblins. After all, they have already seen several species. He was wondering how many species of goblins there were in the whole world and whether there is a friendly look among them, but that's all later. Now I had to think about the task. They need to find the cargo and somehow deliver it to complete the multi-story as shown in the paragraph. In front of them was a familiar table that showed their plan of action. Etsu said, and here, there is a high probability of a fourth option. And as he said earlier, in this situation, you need to immediately determine the cargo. There was a high chance that the condemned were not their cargo. The note did not say where to get and what to deliver to the radar. Takatate said, but didn't they? It was all in vain. Shindo was perplexed by her words. Kyusu supported the girl and asked her to wait a minute. And if they are wrong, they will really be destroyed. Itsui thought about it and realized that she was right. After all, there is the first option. As he said, cargo is cargo, but you need to recognize which one is theirs. In case of refusal of the sentence, there is a possibility of cargo loss. He said again that they needed to split up. The girls were taken aback by his words. This guy is always shocking them. Remaining time, seven days, one hour. Itsuyo said that he and Shindo are strong, so he thought it would be good if they split up. There were two left, the guy asked who would go where. They shared it this way. The a team is looking for cargo addressed to the radar. The team consisted of one horse, a freight wagon, as well as the warrior Makua, Kakhabla's personal soldier, the swordsman of the seventh level. Hakazaki, the swordsman of the 4th level, the air magician of the 10th level, Shindo. The B team is chasing the royal guards. It included two horses, a passenger carriage, a Kahabla, a 6th level fire magician, Takatate, a 9th level nature magician, a 10th level farmer, and a 10th level Koketsui. Eight days before that, the guy remembered how he communicated with the man, asking what he was looking for. The man was looking for another message. The guy thought they always came home and it was very convenient. The guy said there was more in the cart, why would he need so much? The man said that once they flew home, they never come back. The night before Etsui and the others were locked in the cave. The bird was taking off, and the guy wondered what Camelot had written there. Kahabla assumed it was a report about hostile heroes and soldiers from Kortonla, whom he wants to ban from the cave. Therefore, she did not know which was better to kill them using surprise, or... How will a belligerent country behave if, after such a message, their group goes missing? Takatate said she believed they would think about the heroes and soldiers of Kortoma who died in the cave. It seemed to her that this was complete nonsense. Kahabla confirmed, perhaps this is far-fetched. She did not know, she just did not want war. And if we talk about the war with this state, they are ten times smaller. There is almost no chance of victory. She did not want the country to suffer through her fault. Itsui said that they would play with them for a bit and first, they would tell them that Kortonla was not the enemy by writing about it in a letter. But he does not know the letters and will not be able to forge the handwriting and signature, and intimidation will not work to force him to write. And there was a possibility that they might not believe this report. Takatate wondered if this was too much. The guy denied it and thought that suddenly, the letter would not give the desired effect. And they could have ignored the letter and attacked Kortonilo. He had one thought, thanks to which, they would all disappear safely. The girls were surprised and they were scared by his words and strange face. Remaining time, 5 days, 17 hours. They found guards with prisoners. Everyone is safe, but there is a small problem. Due to the flat terrain, we keep our distance. Remaining time, 5 days, 9 hours. The guy said they were starting tomorrow. Yuki understood, but asked if it was bothering him. After all, they planned a bad thing. 
or instead of a hero, he plans to become the king of demons. The guy replied, what can I do? This is the situation. The girl replied that she missed the games, hadn't played online for almost a year. She would like to meet Tsukasa sooner. Takatate thought for a long time, is this world virtual? Cry replied that he did not know. She wanted to give an example, remembering the kiss, what if in this world you kiss? The guy did not understand her question and thought about it. He was abruptly inspired and assumed that she was kissing Makua. The girl immediately got angry and said that she only speaks for their team. The girl said she was just giving an example and she wasn't talking about herself. Takatate thought he was a natural fool or it would be better to say that he missed his level rise while he was sleeping. She wondered how he would react if he were awake. Remaining time, 4 days, 15 hours. Camelot said it was a hard hike. He indicated all the fallen soldiers in the report. They have a very difficult situation, but they continue their campaign under his command. They were moving towards their goal. After all, there is very little left. The warriors said they would cleanse their continent of this filth. Camelot was surprised. He said how? How did you come out of the cave? The man ordered the guy to be destroyed, but he held out his hand and asked to wait, because he had come to talk. The young man answered him, he knew that they could not be destroyed. They are heroes, these wounds are healed in 20 seconds, and if destroyed, he lives in 40 seconds, they will not defeat them. Yetsuyo turned to her, she came out and asked him to shut up. It was his personal decision, it has nothing to do with the heroes. The man asked again, the girl said that he was a fool because he had accepted the religion of Arteros. The guy confirmed it. The topic of conversation, they have three adherents of Arteros, it is necessary to give them to him. Or he, the immortal, will begin to spread the teachings of Arteros in this world. People will hear his hero's voice. The time is not far off when the religion of Arteros will fill this world. But if they give them to him now, he won't do it. The deadline is before sunrise. And if not, they will disappear in torment. He will be back here soon, and they will have to make a final decision. The guy began to laugh angrily and said goodbye to the soldiers, and also called a girl who asked him to shut up again. One of the warriors asked what they would do. Camelot said that if the immortal hero starts spreading heresy, then the expedition will be useless. He didn't know what to do with them. Heroes cannot disappear, but the pit is like a prison for them, from which they will not be able to get out. Therefore, they need to figure out how to catch them. One of the warriors asked how they would do it. Takatate came out of the darkness, she greeted them again, and asked if they had forgotten about her. The warriors were surprised, and shouted loudly, You. The girl asked to be quiet, because she came secretly. Camelot asked why she had come. The girl replied, Can't you see that she has had problems with this team for a long time? The man confirmed, he noticed it, but he was worried that this was really why she decided to sell them. The girl said that there are two of them now, thanks to her. She would like to go over to their side, and as proof of loyalty, she is ready to sleep with them. The girl asked if they would go right now. Wo said she couldn't be trusted, and suddenly she appeared, and she says that. He was wondering how she would prove that it was true. He realized that she wanted to let the prisoners out of the wagon. The girl said that if she didn't believe them, then they could go and find out. But the warriors did not know what to do. The man said that one of them remains on guard. The two of them would set a trap for her. They would tie her up because he was in the cart, and Takatate did not know whether she had succeeded in deceiving him or not. Katsui's plan to rescue four prisoners. The girl said that she had stayed quite a bit. They will arrive at the place in a minute. One minute has passed. The man asked again how much further they had to go. The girl said that she had stayed quite a bit. They will arrive at the place in 30 seconds. Camelot nodded to the warrior, and the warrior nodded back. He took out a sword and plunged it into her. There are 40 seconds left before rebirth. Camelot said he knew she was lying to them. The warrior said he needed to get back soon. The man said that in a little while they would reach the wagon. Immediately, two men stood with their mouths open in surprise. They couldn't believe what had happened. The kitchen knife, stained with something, was in the guy's hand. He smiled and said welcome back. He had bad news for them. Their mission has just ended. Camelot exclaimed that they were servants of the Alteros church. He destroyed both the child, the adult, and the missionary. The guy said he came here to get revenge. For all my five comrades, as the only survivor, Camelot asked to stop. The body was enveloped in flames. The man who had not yet left his body began to writhe in pain. The man realized that he had poured oil on him and destroyed it alive. The girl ordered the flame to appear. The warriors shouted about the magic fire and tried to reach Talkatate. He grabbed her by the robe. The warrior grabbed harder and tried to pull the robe off the girl. But she immediately chose to remove the mantle and her flying tablet. She jumped over the fire and she was hot. She almost singed her wrist, but after throwing off the rope, it got better. 
the girl put on her robe again and mounted her horse. The guy said that they would probably take the cart with their belongings. The guys shouted, try to catch up. Camelot only saw that their wagons were missing. He said they went to them. She was glad they hadn't checked the bodies, otherwise everything would have gone down the drain. It was almost immediately clear that there were no bodies lying there, but sandbags. The girl saw that the kid had regained consciousness. She asked him if his name was Riri. The boy thanked them for saving his life. Etsu said that they need to prepare three dolls that look like bodies. They made shapes out of things that looked like people. He looked at the girl, who said that then they would really have to destroy someone. And they have never destroyed anyone yet. And one of their friends had already been destroyed, so they just had to take revenge. The girl was scared and said that he was the last one of them who came to Earth, from whom she wanted to hear it. She agrees, of course, that if this is a game, it's worth destroying those who do the same to him. But then she didn't consider them heroes. The guy did not understand her words. He took as an example a bus that is about to fall off a cliff, and the weight of the passengers makes it fall down and everyone disappears. And they are four heroes who were called into this world, who happened to be on that bus. The girl showed that this is a terrible comparison, although it turns out that way. At this very moment, in this very place, he made his choice. His rank has been lowered to seventh. The body of the horse lay on the ground without breathing. The warriors caught up with the cart on it a little disappointed. The warrior said that they were lucky at least that they were able to find a wagon. Camelot was very angry. The man pounded on the ground, shouting the same word. He recalled the ceremony of the beginning of the expedition. The king said to attention and all the wars followed the command. In total, the war was surprised that the king would personally conduct the ceremony. And he said that the most devoted had gathered. And when he saw them, he was convinced that they would undoubtedly cope with the task. He counted on their success and asked Paz to try to prove himself in a better way. Camelot started crying. He realized that he couldn't. He failed to meet the king's expectations. The bird had a message for the king and watched it go. He couldn't even imagine how the king would punish them for such a failure of the mission. The man looked up and saw that the companion was attacked. The one who destroyed the warrior laughed, saying that the man was wrong. After all, Cahabla will punish the two of them. Camelot couldn't believe that she was alive, it was impossible, he didn't understand where she came from. The girl told him to take a gun. The man started looking for a weapon in confusion. He looked into the cart and saw an axe. The girl decided to tell him something. Three of the Arterians were alive, and the burned one who was in black clothes was his subordinate. The man was screaming at the girl. But the girl beat him to it and at the moment of his blow held the ball on his hand. The hand with the axe no longer belonged to a man. The girl turned around and swung for another blow, and deprived him of his other arm. Cahabla jumped, and the man looked at her. The girl raised her hand for the next blow, and the man was already left without one leg. The girl looked at him menacingly, and asked what his last word was. The man began to spin and eventually looked at the girl. He got angry, and said he wanted to make the world a safer place. At that moment, the girl made her strike, destroying Camelot. The royal palace of Dioka. The king asked what it meant that the three of them had failed after all. He considered them cabbage rolls, because they just had to get back faster. The subordinates asked if they should send a rescue team. The king replied by asking how many of them survived there. And for the sake of two, they would not strain themselves. The subordinate completely agreed with him. But he also said that there would be an unpleasant moment saviors of the hope of all mankind. The hero has now become our enemy. Although this may be an isolated case when a fool like Camerda angered him, but there is a risk that it will not end there. The king replied that, that is, they might have to fight the hero, the subordinate confirmed. The king asked them to figure out how they could destroy the heroes. The subordinate said that everything would be done, and smiled maliciously. Itsuyo did not yet know the contents of the letter, and it was impossible to say whether they had succeeded or not. The knight thought so too. The guy remembered about the cargo. He would like to do three things. Takatate asked which ones. Hakazaki's team's path lay through Marinboy to Radabod. They didn't find out that there was no need to deliver anything to the city. As they wanted, they found a branch of the courier service, together with its representative went instead of the appointment. Shindo said that at this rate they would arrive at their destination ahead of schedule. Hakazaki asked if it was really enough just to guard the courier. The girl replied to her that if she did not complete the quest in this way, she somehow felt uncomfortable from previous difficulties, it seemed to her too simple. A little more and the quest will be completed, although before that, while we were moving inland, we barely had time. The girls were surprised, the task with the cargo had already been completed. I am glad to see the Etsu team. His team had three options for cargo delivery. The first is three missionaries of the Alteros religion, since it is not prohibited in Radabod. 
They could become a bargaining chip. But upon arrival in the city, the task was not completed. Most likely, they were regarded as refugees, guests, or travelers. The second option was the belongings of the departed royal soldiers, but not a single merchant agreed to take these things. They could be sold, which means that the items were goods, so it was not possible to complete the quest. And finally, the heads of the royal soldiers. Although rather it was proof of the destruction of the soldiers. Heads are an old phrase that has existed in Japan since the Sengoku era. It was not clear whose head was to be brought, so everyone was delivered. But they were all accepted along with information about the actions of the royal soldiers in the vicinity of Marinboy. The man thanked them for providing information about their plans, but he said they didn't have to bring their heads. At that moment, the quest was completed. Itsui thought that this was some kind of scam by a game master, because who would have thought that the third option would be correct, or more correctly, the fourth one. Itsui and Kahabla were standing on the seashore. The girl asked if he would go alone right away. He replied that he needed to explore the area. She thought they needed to say goodbye. The guy confirmed and said it was nice to deal with her. The girl was also pleased. They shook hands at sunrise. The girl closed and opened her eyes and saw a guy running away. She said goodbye to him, calling him a lone hero. There are two hours left before the end of the quest. Everything went well at first. 5% of the card is not so easy to pass. The main character split up to successfully complete the quest. The guy successfully delivered the servants of the Altero's church as cargo along with the heads of the knights. It only remained to follow the map, but suddenly a cold cyclone appeared on the horizon. Kahabla and Makua were sitting at the table and looking at the falling snow with a surprised face. The most sensitive temperature book turned out to be Shindo. Meanwhile, she was wondering what everyone else was doing. According to the map, everyone's movement had slowed down a lot. There are 18 hours left before the end of the quest. It's been a few hours now, and the figure is not increasing. At this rate, Takatate fell to her knees, there was nothing they could not do. She was walking, but suddenly turned around. Her legs wouldn't obey, her body, her heart froze. She thought it was the end. The girl sat down in the snow and decided to rest a little if they continue this way, they will not have time. Therefore, no one goes forward, then if she does not go, no one will be offended. Itsui understood that they would not make it in time. Even professional climbers on a snow-covered mountain would not have time. He understood that they were an amateur. If we couldn't even keep our body temperature, then what should they do? He looked at the available weapons and realized that there was nothing to help. The guy started to get angry and realized that he would have to wait out this snowstorm. Because there is no other way. If he continues to go further, he is guaranteed to disappear. The player's body, after several resurrections, was so chilled that a subsequent resurrection became impossible. A guy was sitting in a snowdrift, trying to warm up. He was serious, and in another snowdrift sat Takatate, who was already freezing. Yes, the end of the quest is four hours away. Shindo's ghost realized that the snow began to fall weaker, and it became a little lighter, which meant that morning was coming. She was trying to move her body because it was her body. In the snowdrift, Takatate wanted to review the sorceress girls one last time. There was a girl in front of her who was unhappy that she had decided to sleep. It was Magi Violet. The girl denied it, because she was asleep and it was an illusion. Violet asked if she remembered what Rose did at the end of the first season, when she was struck by the lightning of the demon king Rukifer. Takatate remembered. The girl continued to ask if she remembered what Rosa did at the end of the second season, when she was struck by the energy flow of Auroboros. Violet decided to ask again if she hadn't learned anything from watching them. The girl said that the magical sisters always rise again for the sake of love, the hopes of the children of the whole world. Violet disappeared, and Takatate laughed and activated fire magic. The girl was running snot, and she was able to warm herself up. She was very cold. The snow intensified, the guy crawled in a snow tunnel and was glad that there were earthworms, similar in thickness to a human. There were about 25 kilometers left to complete the quest, it was unrealistic. Yuka said goodbye to the idea of returning home a long time ago. Her heart sank into a 2D illusion. She had seen all the witches. That's just that she was never able to move forward in the end. She stopped when she reached a certain point. Then a girl on a big cat came up. She asked why she was sleeping here. The girl also realized that she was also a player. She thought they were new characters and asked how many times she had already been here. The girl realized that she was still a beginner because she was only the fourth time in this world. The girl decided to speed up a little. She asked the hero if she was holding on tight. An unknown girl began to turn to the Lady of the Winds. Silphil, she asked to grant her her power and serve her Fatina. The girl waved her staff and they jumped up. 
The quest to explore the map is 5% completed. Shindo was surprised because it couldn't be. They are alive and they have coped. The game master appeared behind her. The girl shouted at him not to appear like that behind her back. He said that since they had done it, he would answer one of their questions. The girl did not understand why there was only one question, because they had been through so much. What kind of person did she meet at the very end? But this was a rare case. She remembered her question to Itsuya and asked it to the master. The game master was silent at first, but replied that this world was parallel to their world. Let's say, at a fork, a person turns right, and assume that there is an option in which a person turns left. The guy understood the principle and thought that if he turned left, he would get into an accident and disappear. In that case, in a parallel world, they will be alive. Thus, the parallel world will develop all this time and events will take their course in it. This is a branch of a parallel world. It developed separately from the moment of the origin of the universe itself. If we consider that the universe is, like, 130 billion years old, it turns out that the number of such parallel worlds tends to infinity. But since it is impossible to explore parallel measures in the usual ways, this is only one of the possible concepts of a parallel world. Itsui understood, but why there was such a long explanation. He did not understand what he wanted to say to everyone. However, it became possible for them to use a special way to move to the parallel world we need. A special way is the similarity of the wavelength. One day, about 5 billion years ago, a race strongly resembling modern humans was born, and the race had a similar history to the current human, and in other words, another earthly civilization. They developed on another planet, as they appeared before Earth, because it is only 4 billion 600 million years old and after that, they arrived on it. A different molecular composition, a different ecosystem, a highly intelligent life form. But one day they decided to live in a virtual world very similar to planet Earth. The guy did not understand why virtual ones were needed. There were also appropriate clothes and weapons and bodies that did not even bleed. It was only the players who didn't bleed. It allows not only to launch air into the enemy's body, monsters, beasts, and even people, if only the players are in that world virtually, then everyone else is there physically. The master spread his hands and said that they had asked themselves. Takatate didn't understand what he was nervous about. If the inhabitants of that world are not artificial intelligence, but earthlings of another world, then it turns out that he destroyed people. At the age of 14, Yatsuya will have to take the full weight of the sin he committed virtually in the world. He knew he had destroyed only one person and his heart was beating like crazy. The final exams were passed. The guy jumped because of the sound of footsteps. The girl asked him to reply to the message. The guy opened the phone. There was a question what it would be like to destroy a person. He asked the girl if she was a master or someone else from the future. She replied that he had no right to ask questions. The guy realized that this was the master of the game and he had just been talking normally. Mitsui said he was halfway into the category of people who probably deserved to disappear, but he was also halfway to something else. If he had known he was a real person, he would never have done this. And that was all, the girl asked again. The guy thought about it, he said that he had nothing more to say. The girl understood. She said if he wanted to talk about a new player, the guy didn't understand why. She would like him to meet him in advance. The guy agreed, and the girl gave him a cap. Etsu took the cap and asked where they were going. A train passed by. People were walking down the street, they were sitting in a cafe. He didn't understand why they were in this Chinese restaurant. The girl drew his attention to the man at the bar, saying that he was a supplier of illegal substances, but had recently done away with it. Ten seconds later, a new player will appear and destroy him to work off the debt. Someone tricked him into believing that he wouldn't get caught for it. The door swung open and three masked men entered the restaurant. The first one in the mask noticed the right person, and said that he would take a hit. Etsu did not understand which of them needed a man. The guy was angry and put his foot right in front of the masked bandit so that he fell. The bandit didn't understand why the hell he had fallen. Itsuyo said that he shouldn't destroy it. He didn't know what happened, but he thinks he was cheated. The bandit hit the guy on the leg, shouting at him to shut his mouth. Itsui rolled off in pain and at the same moment hit the bandit in the stomach so that he flew off. The guy grabbed the bat. He couldn't stand fools who didn't listen to him. And if they're that stupid, it's no wonder they were tricked into coming here. The guy hit one of the bandits on the head and at the same moment received a blow to the arm. But then he hit the back of the one who hit him on the arm. There was a guy with a bat flying on it, who shouted his brother's name. 
he was serious, the guy remembered that this was his brother's name, so it was the same Keita. The bandit waved the bat, but Yatsu immediately turned clearly right into the opponent's bat, thereby breaking both bats. Two guys had a piece of the bat in their hands. Keita wanted to swing his fist, and Yatsuyo held it in the guy's face, but he grabbed his fist and flew away anyway. When Yatsuyo fell, he pulled off the mask from the bandit, who immediately covered himself with his hand. The guy said that their target had escaped and that they had to get out with their brother before the cops arrived. But Keita wanted to destroy him, he had to do it. He remembered how the man said that even the interest would not cover it, and the girl said that next month she would pay. The man said that she has been doing this for more than 10 years and she will not be able to work in clubs forever. It was the end for her. Keita told me to get out of the way. The same man turned to the two brothers, telling them to go to him because he had a job for them. If they do as he says, they will cover their debts in a month. The guy kept saying that he had to destroy it. He wondered why he got in his way. Because that guy was a supplier of illegal substances, and no one would worry if he disappeared. The guy didn't understand why he was protecting him. The man sitting in the truck did not understand what was going on. He repeated his question, but the other man did not know and there was some schoolboy there. The guy's fight continued. The guy kicked him in the stomach so that he twisted around his leg. Keita was angry. Yatsuyo did not let him pass and received multiple blows in his direction. The guys calmed down and exhaled. At that moment Keita was slapped on the shoulder, saying to move away. The man told him not to lie to him and pointed the gun in his direction. Suddenly, the girl turned to the guy, and the man realized that he was a child. The girl asked if he wanted to use it and handed him a glove. The guy pulled it over his arm. At the same moment, Yatsuyo made a dash towards them. The guy screamed to stop, using the magic of stopping. Atsui jumped up to the people, snatching the gun from the man's hands, and he also hit him. There were splashes of blood everywhere. The guy was trying to catch his breath, and the other one was standing in surprise. The man was unconscious. Keita said that this guy had been terrorizing his family for years and didn't understand what had just happened. The police finally arrived. Itsuyo asked the guy why he hadn't run away yet. Keita asked him to wait. He did not understand who this psychopath was and why he allowed him and his brother to escape. The man took the gun and pointed it towards Yatsuyo, but Keita kicked the gun out of his hand. The man did not understand why he did this, because he owed him his life. The guy told him to shut up and said that he had lost to a child, and now he wanted to shoot him in the back. That was the end for him. Itsui and the girl were standing on the roof. The guy asked what they were doing here, she replied that she just wanted to talk a little. He stopped the irreversible action today. Could it mean that he understood the value of life? The guy continued that as she said, saving Takatate helped them later. She was the first to give them a 5% coverage card. She reached the end to return to reality, to reality without her photos without clothes. Figuratively speaking, as a result, it increased their chances of surviving the mission. And thanks to this, their new player is in reality, where he and his brother are not in prison, and he hoped to go home. Etsu smilingly asked, what is it? Because someone stupid enough to be deceived who agreed to what destruction deserves destruction. I watched from the roof as the police took that man away. It looks like the two brothers left, it was good. He asked if he knew what he was thinking. Everyone should disappear, starting with the least important one. He wouldn't need this blonde guy if he wasn't a gambler. But he wanted to increase Shindo and Hakazaki's chances of survival as much as he could, even if not by much. He put a price on human life, because he just judges them as an anonymous internet troll. She asked who does he think he is. He replied that he was nobody, he was just a kid. Just a stupid kid with his dreams, if you look at it with an open mind, then he was definitely wrong, and he understood it. But, he didn't know, it felt real. He felt that way. It seemed to him that everyone in society was wrong and only he was right. And yes, he also knows that he's just a kid who thinks too much. His open palm is a pity and a fist. He's just fighting for what he believes in. So it was and so it will be. The 19th of July. They moved into a parallel world, which surprised everyone. Shindo noticed the guy Yatsuya was talking about. Keita didn't understand what was going on. The fifth round has begun. Two minutes later, the game master was playing roulette. It was interesting what kind of class the fifth player, Keita, would have. Yatsuya hoped that you would be something weak. Keita got a copyist warrior. Given his physical skills, he might be the strongest of them all. Quest, bring the symbol of the Jifon to Vekadama. Itsui said maybe they should go to Cortonal to figure out what the assignment was. Shindo, first, explain everything to Tori. Hato said that he did not like this tone of his. A new rapid movement system was delivered. Players can instantly return to any places they visited before. Shindo was sure he was puzzled. She suggested just going through the basics for him. 
Itsui said, isn't saving time more important than his stress? Keita asked to fill him in first, or he's not going to do this bistro thing. Shindo was right, but Yatsui corrected the guy by saying it wasn't a bistro. The guy realized that they were heroes and they were trying not to disappear. Shindo was glad that it quickly dawned on him, because this is a new record. The guy praised himself, but he was kicked out of high school, so he's too dumb to understand complicated things. Yatsuyo said he couldn't be kicked out of high school because it's compulsory. The guy replied that he thought he was strong for the kid, but he was just showing off. Atsui said that if he was done talking, then he should start preparing for a quick move. Keita said he wanted to end that battle between them. He wanted to find out what his new body could do. Etsu didn't want to do that. He gave up and asked me to hurry up. Keita asked me to do that thing again, the one that froze them. Yatsuya said he only had enough mana for one time. The guy made a jerk and told him to bow down in front of him. Keita fell to his knees. He was shocked. Yatsuyo swung his foot, hit him on the chin, and thought he had missed. Well, the guy fell on his back and immediately hit it on the head. Keita laughed and said that it looked like he had won and also continued to beat him. Itsui thought it was low because he was hitting a recumbent. Cortonal has 23.59 minutes left before the next fast move. Several years passed between the third and fourth rounds. He wondered when it was now, was Kahabla still here? At the Knights Guild, Yetsui asked if Kahabla was here now, but was told that she would be back in the evening. The guy said they'd be back later. In the meantime, they needed to look for information about the quest. Their quest is to bring the symbol of Jifon Vekadom. Apparently, they have to sail to Jifon Island to find out what it is all about. They will quickly move to Ladderi tomorrow to rent a boat there. This evening, there is 17 left until the next fast move. Chahabla went night changed a lot of emotions, but she was glad to see them again, because it had been 15 years. All four heroes were surprised that 15 years had passed. The girl turned to the children, saying that there was nothing to worry about and they should say hello. The four heroes were surprised by her relaxation. The girl said that she left the night nights about seven years ago. Itsuya didn't understand what was going on. After a while, they were sitting at the table. The girl said that she wanted to become the strongest knight in the world, wanted to be like her father and brothers, but she did not know the difference between means and ends. For them, strength was a means to protect the earth, but for her, strength was the very goal. She wanted to be strong, so that it didn't mean a point. It was a goal that couldn't be achieved while you were burning for her. Well, when she lost her right arm in battle, there was nothing left in her heart to keep it burning. Losing her arm was the end of her dream. She became weak when she returned from their quest. Diok sought to unite the entire continent, becoming stronger. Cortonal sent envoys to neighboring countries, fighting for the creation of a coalition. A year later, the Diok was up against the strength of their 22 allied countries. A large-scale war. She participated in four companies. After the fight, what she saw was a living hell. Seven out of ten soldiers died in a hail of stones and arrows, none of their sword training mattered. They were meaningless against an airstrike. A decade of training meant nothing. When the arrows ran out, the melee began. Well, it was a battle of two huge forces. If someone attacks from behind while you are fighting with another, then you are destroyed. When people disappear in such numbers, they no longer look like people. Just things. Their identities have been erased. Each one is just another number on the death list. The details of their destruction are lost in history. 200,000 people have disappeared in the last 14 years. The coalition lost 50,000. They knew that the Diok had lost three times as much. Rotting bodies spread diseases, destroyed farmers and their rotting fields. It is said that more than half of the disappeared Diokas were civilians. Pick up the sword, then put it down, and lo and behold, you have destroyed a man. She killed over 30 soldiers in four companies, or, in truth, three companies. The fourth was a year after she gave birth to her first child. As soon as she took her away and started raising her, she lost her grip. The realization of how hard it was to raise a child made her hesitate for a moment. That's how she lost her right arm. Itsui thought it was 100 times easier to break something than to build it. Shindo said that he was right. She believed that raising and raising children is 100, no, 10,000 times more difficult than destroying someone. Kyusu confirmed and asked not to be so strict with herself because she did not weaken at all. His inspiring speech touched his own heart. The girl asked if they really thought so. Everything was confirmed. Kahebel was very similar to Yatsui. But in those 15 years, she experienced the war, she had children, and she changed. Would he also finish later? Maybe not completely, if he couldn't have children. Keita said that he once delivered a baby. When he was about five, her mother went into labor. Only he was there, so he had to reach out and pull the dude out. Shindo thought it was cool, and asked, how is he now? 
The guy replied that he was fine, about her age. The girl replied that it was really great, and asked if they got along with each other. Cater replied that their attitude was better than most. He was almost his servant. Hakazaki said that the servant was probably not the best wording and asked what about the father. He told her that he only had a mother. Yes, but I thought about it. He was born healthy. His parents were still with him. He had no difficulties in life. Keita continued, they have been in debt for decades. He was asked to destroy a guy last week. He would cut down a ton of money and was told he would never be caught. The girls were surprised by his words. The guy had never done this before, but he and his brother went there, and this guy was there and defeated everyone, including that lone shark. The guy turned to Itsuya. He paid him in the morning for beating his brother, but he thanked him for the past week. He would also like to thank him on behalf of his mother and brother because he really helped them. The guy gritted his teeth. He knew nothing about what it was like to live in need, like everyone who was present at the table. He would never have the power of words like theirs, even if he wants to become the strongest. With a sad face, Kahabla remembered her husband, who disappeared in battle five years ago. The guy said his old man was alive. The girls began to sympathize. The knight remembered the white art erosion child and asked if they knew what he was like now. He became the leader of the fighters, because he was saved by Atsui, so he called himself the hero's chosen one. They stripped the heads of damaged enemies and lined them up in the streets. He learned it from Yatsuyo. He admired him and wanted to do the same as the heroes did on their land. His words and actions shaped the history of this world. It was night outside, and all the characters were sleeping in the common room. The door creaked and Kahebla appeared behind it. There is seven left until the next fast move. The guy asked where they were. The girl replied that they were on the city wall. She used to climb up here when she was on patrol. She liked to watch the sunrise from there. She thought it might be a good idea to watch it with him before he left. He remembered their last conversation, and he said that they had some kind of stupid goodbye. To him, she was just an NPC. He thought he would see her again very soon. The guy apologized for involving her in Bimsburg. After all, he wouldn't have disappeared if he hadn't taken them with them. The girl looked at him sadly and said that she had never traveled so long or so far in her life, and he probably won't do it again. She recalled all the moments spent with the characters and said that it was hard, bitter, sweet, painful, but it was her youth. And to sum it up in one word, it would be the word youth. She thought those memories helped her get through all that hell on the battlefield. She thanked him for dragging her into this. The guy wondered if he really helped her. Girl C said they would be perfect for each other. Well, the guy said he thought they were similar then but not now. Kehebla asked if they had told him what happened after he lost consciousness from magical exhaustion. The guy didn't know. The girl thought about it and said what a pity. The girl said she loved him. She began to cry and apologized for getting old before him. She asked him if everything was okay. The guy was silent, but said that everything was fine. Shindo slid down the wall and said they had to go. Hakazaki also wanted to leave. In this world, so much time passes with each completed task. The girl thought it would be funny to look at them, but to discuss unhappy lovers. Suddenly the girls were called out, it was Jai. They constantly meet people, only to leave them again. The man said that they had saved his village from a troll. He couldn't thank them enough for that. Kyusu realized who it was. Memories flashed through her mind, and she began to cry. It was nice to see him again. The game master seemed to be joking with them. What was the point of the quests? The girl asked how his life was, because every time they met, it was a once-in-a-lifetime chance. Itsuyo thanked Kahebla for everything. Six days later, they were heading to Jifon Island, a scary place. The man said there were volcanoes, random earthquakes. It was called the Island of Catastrophes. Another man said that they say he is controlled by monsters, and he asked if they were heading there because they had seen ads for mercenaries. There were three warriors in the cargo hold who opened their eyes, and again they move on. On the island, everyone was greeted by two girls who joyfully welcomed them to the island of Jifon. They were waked them, and they were cheering. Now they definitely had to win. They went on to new adventures. Round 5 begins. The guy remembered how a minute ago they were greeted by beautiful two girls who were very polite and well-mannered. Waked them ritual dancers. It looks like they sent a request to the mercenaries. Five were accepted, including three from their ship. Itsui said that their quest is to bring the symbol of the Jifon to Wakedama. Everything is clear with Jifon. But what is Wakedama? he asked. It seemed like the girls were disappointed that they weren't mercenaries for their errand. Keita asked if the girls wanted a drink. Itsuya told him to shut up before it turned into an even bigger farce. Keita asked why the girls were so angry. The girls replied that it was because they were not here at their request. Keita said they would do it and asked what about a date. The guys were standing in the back and were shocked by what they saw. 
The girls pointed to the buffalo standing next to them and said that it was the symbol of the Jifon. This meant that the boys needed to sacrifice a buffalo as an offering to their gods at the harvest festival, they thought. But it turned out that right now it is impossible to take the lives of their buffaloes, even as a sacrifice on Wakedama. The girls suggested going north, and the guys should have understood what they were talking about. When they reached the place, the girls asked if they could see the tower. Humamo Fortress is an impregnable fortress built by their outstanding architects 400 years ago. Five years ago, a group of foreigners invaded their island and captured the fortress. Looking closely, the guys saw the orcs, among them was the queen of the tribe. The queen's danger was level C, and the other two, simple orcs, were level D. These were the given orcs of ill. The orcs own all the buffaloes. That's why there are so few of them, the guys concluded. AI asked if they understood now why they needed mercenaries. Their task is to take the lives of all orcs. They have to squeeze them out faster than they do them. Eleven days later, at the harvest festival, they will come to pick up their buffaloes. The guys have to destroy them all, starting with the queen. By a strange coincidence, their work will help them with the quest. Keita asked if they just needed to beat the orcs, then said that it was very easy. Hakazaki asked the girls what the Vekedim were doing. AI replied that they perform ritual dances during the sowing of the harvest and are responsible for collecting victims at the festival. Did Yetsuki say someone else could do it? The girls replied, no. An additional condition was that they had to survive. The guy said they had about 800 inhabitants and 40 buffaloes, and it's so hard to defeat the orcs. Will they be able to do it? He was looking at the map. They came to the training ground. The mercenary asked if they needed to be brought up to date. They had to hit the logs without going into a two-meter circle. The mercenary's name was Cantal, and he became the leader even though he arrived with them. He is the oldest of the warriors and the only one with experience fighting orcs. Orcs are three meters tall, and their kill zone is two meters, a direct hit from them is lethal. He had tied these logs together as a skin simulation. If he couldn't hit them, then they were useless in battle. It reminded me of the battle with the troll. With such a short weapon, he would never damage them. Players can only use weapons of their profession. Shindo and Keita passed. As a result, three of them were left in the rear. He hoped that they would be able to use the bow, but if they couldn't even do that. Atsuyo ran to the pumping station. He couldn't sit around like this. Keita was left alone with Shindo and decided to get to know each other better. He will become stronger and cope. He asked if there were any more monsters here. The girl said there was no one else. Experience is mostly gained for defeating monsters. Meanwhile, wizards gain experience for using spells, and they get a little bit of repetition for cooking. Since he's a farmer, he can get paid to work in the field. The girl said that her family has won. The field was big. Takate didn't ask for it, but the garden wasn't bad. Itsuyo helped his grandmother in the field as a child. Hakazaki did not know about it. The earthquake started. Everyone was shaking. The earthquake was about four points. The girls were surprised that the guests did not react. It was commonplace for them. So many fruits were thrown off, the guy thought they could get even bigger. But the soil was not particularly fertile, so the fruits were small. Their entire soil was made of volcanic rock and ash. The girl was surprised by his knowledge. On the mainland, most of the soil has been underwater for tens of thousands of years, and this meant that a lot of sea creatures were in the soil and fed it. And volcanic rocks are formed with the help of solidified magma, so that the soil is almost not nutritious. The girl asked what could be done about it, but it was possible to use fertilizers. They used buffalo manure for this. He suggested using fertilizers from inedible algae. He jumped into the water, the girl told him to be careful because it was deep there. The guy swam and saw a lot of fish and algae. And there are a lot of irregularities in the sea lava. This is the beginning that algae is easier to grow and small fish eat all this. The guy was sinking to the bottom. It should have worked, the clams look edible, and the shell will be used for compost. First you need to put the algae in a container and wait until they become compost. The girl asked if they could just be thrown into the fields. She replied that they could become moldy and block the soil's access to oxygen. They can be burned and sprinkled, but this is less effective. And they should go well with buffalo manure, they will be mixed later. AI asked where the guy was looking and hit him for it. That is, if he hadn't been watching, everything would have been fine. He asked if they were always so close. AI said that protect her from the bad guys, no one will take her away from her. He asked me not to worry because he didn't even try. So, AI could be left alone. Etsu asked again, and remembered that they were both 25. The girls were crushed. Ayana thought she would get married at 18, but the train left, all their friends were already raising children. He realized that he had hit the patient. The guy asked if the orcs felt that there was no substitute for them. 
The girls confirmed that they had destroyed over 10 of their successors. They needed to level up. He'll cook the clams. Itsuyo chopped the root vegetables and beans and added fish sauce. The dish was ready, fried beans with a mixture of three types of shellfish and root vegetables. The girls liked it. They had to eat everything and do compost. He was full. They mixed gristle and algae, added shells, manure and mixed. It smelled strong, but it works the same way. They said there are hot springs. There is enough temperature there to speed up the work of microbes. And he will help them with his creation magic. This way they will multiply faster. One hour later, the fertilizer was ready. The guy was spreading compost everywhere. He thought it was hard labor. They could listen to the radio at home. He asked if there was anything that would speed up time. Ayana said it was in their line. He thought it was a ritual dance. He had never seen such a thing. The girls wondered what it would be like. My father played the flute, my mother played the drums, the crowd came out of nowhere. It was a hit song for the last 800 years. The girls prepared them for the song of countless islands, and they began to sing and dance, their song was a march on turnips. The guys began to sing along and support the girls. Etsu was shocked. The girls sang, the guys supported, he was still in shock. It was a strange sight. The song ended, and the guy shouted that they were just a pop band. Takatate realized that he had broken through. Hakazaki confirmed. Someone said about 10 mercenaries, but half were heroes. The man didn't know much, but they were resurrected after disappearing, so you need to be careful with them. The big man thanked him for the warning. For every farmer, the morning starts early. Atsuya worked hard in the field in order to raise his level and change his profession. All he thought about was that he needed to fight the orcs. It was already the second day of training, and there were only 10 days left before the final battle. Yushindo fought with the dummies, wanting only to win. The girl cut one by one, repeating in her head that she needed to hit the enemy first, and then retreat. Shindo breathed deeply after defeating another doll. She looked at the crowds of people and thought that they still needed another hundred people for at least some chance of winning. Local people are already making trenches and embankments, and they are also training in archery. It was very good, of course, but Shindo was still doubtful. She knew that they had already paid the mercenaries well, but they still had to work so as not to die. Suddenly, the man who was in charge of the process shouted loudly, telling the others to stand up and get ready. He told them that it was important to hold their breath and release the bowstring in a second. The first person tried to shoot after the signal, but he failed and the arrow fell. After that, he cursed and threw the bow on the floor. Others did it right after him. They said they wouldn't do it anymore. Shindo thought about how she knew they wouldn't like it. The worker shouted that they had paid the full price for the mercenaries. He told them that they should go and fight on their own. One of the mercenaries calmly said that they were not asking the people to go on the attack with them. But if they shot at least one, it would increase the chances of everyone. He sternly said that it was not about money, and then either all the people would die, or all the orcs would die, and there could be no other way. The villagers began to argue that they were not afraid to fight the orcs, and if they lost, they would kill everyone. Others shouted that they should just be allowed to continue their rampage. I started an argument between them. Some asked if their opponents knew how hard it was to breed. It was as if they were just giving all their efforts, blood and sweat right into the mouths of these orcs without getting a dime for it. They said they didn't have much money because of it. Watching this, Tori asked if they could just shut up. Shindo took a deep breath and thought about what they had been told earlier that these were the best people from all over the island. They started fighting. Some said they still had money left and needed to hire more mercenaries, while others asked why this man shouldn't call his friends. Shindo tried to calm them down. She thought that people in all worlds are the same. One of the residents grabbed the mercenary and shouted that they still had money, so he did not understand why there was so little of it. He told the guy to bring more mercenaries. The guy smiled and said he didn't think it would help. Mercenaries value their lives more than money. Considering their chances of winning, it was a miracle that there were as many as five psychos who agreed to such a thing. The residents were taken aback. Shindo wondered why these five people agreed. Suddenly, Lale, who was in charge of the learning process, pointed to the side and asked the others to look. He was the second in command. The archers had fairly good eyesight, and especially experienced ones like Lale. They saw that there was an orc sitting behind a small stone, who had been watching them all this time. Shindo didn't know if the orc had noticed them. She thought that if they found out, their surprise attack would fail. Suddenly, everyone noticed that the orc was leaving. They realized that he would tell them everything. If the monsters realize that there are mercenaries here, then they will be in a very bad position. Rice, still a relatively young mercenary, ran forward and shouted that he would catch the orc. Lale grinned and noticed how quickly Rice ran into battle. 
He said it was great, after which he noted that it was not surprising that he ran away from those guys as well. Shindo recalled that Rice is a former soldier from a fallen country, and when it was destroyed four years ago, enemy soldiers tried to capture all the survivors. Rice caught up with the orc and stood right in front of him, after which he exclaimed that the monster would not go any further. Shindo was surprised that he had already caught up with the monster. The next moment, the orc made a strong attack, hitting the ground. Rice jumped back, then loudly asked the guys if they could help him. The next moment, there was an arrow in the back of the orc, which flew there with a loud whistle. Shindo noted that Lale had made a great shot. However, the girl also noticed that such a shot left only a slight wound. She was genuinely shocked by how thick the orc's skin was. The girl who arrived with Lale also pulled the bowstring. That girl was Katz. This was her first mission. Even though she was a bow shooter, she was actually a swordsman. Katz also shot at the orc, but he deflected all the arrows with his hand. Shindo was surprised to notice that the monster's arms were even stronger than its back. She asked if this orc was made of metal. Shindo jumped into the air, swinging her weapon. Tori was also not far behind. He raised his staff to launch an attack. Despite the guy's goals, the monster quickly and easily dodged the attacks, after which it inflicted even more severe damage on them. With just one punch, he defeated both Shindo and Tori. The man who ran with them bared his teeth, then rushed to attack. Using his sword, he was able to cut through the monster's flesh. Shindo was surprised to notice that Cantal was doing very well. She remembered that this man was from the same country as Rice, but he was an officer, not a simple resident. And right now, he was the only person who had any experience fighting orcs. He struck again, with which he cut the orc. Earlier, he told the guys that they should always be on the move in battle. After the attack, they must retreat six steps to avoid being hit. It was necessary to attack only when they could also retreat. Their main task was survival. Shindo watched the fight and noted that it takes a lot of time, stamina and concentration. However, even so it was useful. Zanzema ran into battle with a huge sword to the advantage. The man used a two-handed weapon, and this was an extremely rare occurrence in their time. It was not a compliment, because such a weapon is very difficult to use. At that moment, Cantal asked the man what his backup weapon was. With a smile on his face, Zanzamer said that he was not there, because he only uses his two-handed. Shindo also said that with such weapons it is difficult to just run, let alone fight. And using it in a battle where you could die from a single blow was very dangerous. Zanzamer rushed at the orc with his weapon, simultaneously telling the others to move away. Quickly and deftly, he cut off the orc's fingers. Shindo watched in amazement and couldn't believe that he could cut off those steel fingers. The orc screamed loudly, holding onto his hands. The next moment, Cantal jumped onto the orc's back and pierced its neck with a weapon. After that, he jumped back and landed on his feet, while the orc fell to the ground dead. Cantal spoke about how disgusting this man was. He shouted to Zanzil that if it hadn't worked, the man would already be dead. Zanzilu smiled and agreed, after which he said that it worked anyway. After a while, Tori and Shindo resurrected Lee. A lot of people gathered around the orc's body. They were all surprised that the mercenaries were able to kill this creature. Itsuya thoughtfully noted how the orcs looked up close. One of the residents anxiously noticed that usually orcs do not go south, so he did not know what the monster was doing here. Upon hearing this, the guys were amazed. Hakazaki asked if it could be that he came to check everything before the festival. Itsuya also added that it could be that the monster heard the mercenaries training. They began to have the most terrible possible probabilities. Suddenly, the residents suggested that the orcs might already know absolutely everything about the mercenaries. There was talk among people that there might be a traitor among them. This man sternly told them not to discuss it so simply, because the traitor was definitely out there somewhere. People got scared, and then they started quarreling again blaming each other and making hasty conclusions and guesses. Ai and Ayana shouted at the others not to swear, because they all need to be together at such a difficult time. Residents shouted that it was the girls who called these people. They said they didn't agree to anything at all, after which they blamed Ayana and Ai. Hakazaki indignantly said that these girls were the only ones who did anything for the island. Shindo agreed and exclaimed that if the orcs appeared, they would just eat everyone there. She asked what these men were doing, after which she replied that they decided to dump everything on two girls. Tori asked Yetsui if they should cut up the villagers first. He didn't understand what the point was in keeping them alive. Yetsuya said that there was no point, because the task only said to protect Vekadom, and not a word about the others. Tori was delighted, saying that in this case they had one less problem. The residents caught themselves and started asking what these people were talking about. They claimed to be their employers, whom they had paid. 
She said the guys should protect them. Cantal said thoughtfully that he didn't like it. The man hoped that because of this they would not lose another fight. Hearing about another fight, Shindo was wary, but quickly assumed that they were talking about that case. Zanziel loudly called the people and told them to stop talking nonsense. At the same time, the man menacingly plunged his weapon into the ground. Because of this, the residents immediately tensed and fell silent, turning their attention to Zanziel. Seeing the man, Ayana was a little surprised as she recognized him. She exclaimed loudly, asking if it was really Zanza. She told me that they are the same age as him. The residents also recognized Zanza and started saying that she was right and this was the boy. They were surprised that he had survived. The man noted that now they finally remembered, after which he said that nothing had changed here. The man sternly said that it was good that their ancestors couldn't see it. He asked what they would say. He talked about what happened 900 years ago, after which the residents awkwardly fell silent. They remembered the words of Ayana and Ai, who said that their ancestors, being weak slaves, escaped from the mainland and went to sea in search of land without wars and conflicts. An island full of disasters could hardly be called paradise, but they decided to stay there and cultivate the land. Paradise, they said, is not something that can be found, but something that can be created. Zanzel told the residents to look at themselves, because because of their wealth they had forgotten how their ancestors fled the mainland. Their people used to be ministers, but now they use money to decide who lives and who dies. He said that with the help of money they are trying to preserve not the world, but their status as a rich man. He said that they didn't even earn it, but only inherited it. He exclaimed that 15 years ago he left this island because he was tired of being like them. However, he is ready to fight because, unlike these people, he loves this land. Ai agreed and said that their ancestors were not the same losers, and they built a real paradise on Earth. Ayana added that time had passed and he had forgotten what was behind it. The most important thing on this island was his idea, a paradise without wars and conflicts. This is something more than just the Earth, more than just people. This is the land and people, culture and knowledge, as well as their own pride. She said that without these five things, it's all just fake. Shindo smiled, talking about pride. She said that's definitely not what they're experiencing. Tori smiled and agreed, saying that it definitely wasn't while these people were there. Atsuya said that if they value their lives above these qualities, then it's time for them to flee the island. Zanziel agreed and said it was time to choose. He asked the residents if they would protect the place. Negotiations have begun among the people. Everyone was in turmoil. Suddenly one of them plucked up the courage and confidently said that he would do it too and would fight. He was followed by many others who did not want to give up their only homeland. The two who were outraged earlier exchanged glances with each other, after which they hesitantly said that they would also participate. Cantle noticed that the situation seemed to have changed. Lale said that as a mercenary, the guy didn't stand out in any way, but it looks like he turned out to be more useful than he could have imagined. The guys watched as the people became more enthusiastic. However, at this time, Shindo could not get rid of the thought of whether there was a traitor among them or not. At this time, someone's sad sighs could be heard in the large house. A huge orc was asking if his son had fallen into a volcano and died. The man who stood in front of him confirmed it. He thought that if he told her the truth, there would be a terrible rampage, and he didn't even know who would win it. The orc told him to remember that she had previously promised that she would spare the man's family, even if she destroyed the island. She cried out for him to tell her the truth. The man was thinking that he needed to buy more time, and later he would just join the winner. He exclaimed that it was true, and the orc stumbled and fell into the volcano, and he personally saw it. The next day, Itsuya was still working hard to level up. Suddenly, he heard a sound, after which a master with a wheel appeared in front of him. He informed the guy that Yatsuya was able to reach the 10th level. The guy shouted joyfully. The master said that since Yatsuya studied the wizard, this section is divided into archivist and magician. The guy was surprised, because a high-level profession had opened up for him. With shining eyes, he thought that he definitely wanted one. He told the master that he wanted to start. The master turned the wheel, after which he stopped at the blacksmith. Atsuya cursed, noticing that this was again a profession with a half percent chance of falling out. This was the third time. The guy asked the master how this was possible. He exclaimed that he did it on purpose, after which he asked why this wheel was needed at all. The master did not answer and said goodbye. Atsuya shouted after him so that the master would not leave the conversation. He cursed, then decided to look at his stats. When he opened them, he was amazed because he saw that he could create weapons and armor. The equipment created by the blacksmith player depends on many conditions, but can be used by all players. For every blacksmith, everything starts late. The guy worked hard to get better. 
He was thinking that he needed something to fight the orcs. There were only nine days left before the festival. The man Yatsuya was studying with asked the guy if they would continue working. The guy paused, then agreed and said that they would start all over again. He put the sword he had made back into the furnace to melt it down again. The guy listened attentively to the instructions of the man who taught him. A few hours ago, the guy told Ayana and Ai that he had become a blacksmith, which he was very surprised by. The guy skeptically said that these were heroic things. He asked the girls if they even had blacksmiths. Ai said that he is, and then added that her grandfather is like that. She asked if Yatsuya wanted to meet him. The guy agreed and asked her to arrange a meeting for them. The guy was standing at the machine and thinking that everything was bad, because he had only 10 days left. The man said that Atsuya was starting from scratch, and he didn't like the guy's chances. Atsuya thought that blacksmithing gives the hero knowledge about metal and leather, the ability to create weapons, but it does not give the experience of a blacksmith. Also, as with the skills of a farmer and a cook, it's more about memorizing an entire reference volume on this topic. Atsuya asked the blacksmith if there was another way. The man said it was possible that casting would be easier. Forging can be done in two ways. What he did earlier is called stamping. This is when heated metal is driven into a mold. Casting, on the other hand, is when he melts metal and pours it into the desired shape. Thus, once he creates the mold, all he needs to do is pour metal into it. The man pulled out an object and said that in this they make molds for castings. He needs to mix clay with water, then knead it into a mold and make an impression. Atsuya said he understood. He was thinking that they were dealing with orcs. And the skin is thick, so you need to be strong enough to break through it. And the weapon works just like in real life. He will not be able to put it in the virtual storage, and if it breaks, it becomes useless. He needed to lighten the weapon and make it as durable and powerful as possible. At first, Yatsuya thought about a two-handed weapon, but many will not cope with it. The katana was next on the list, but its blade was too thin and could break quickly. After that, he thought of making a naginata, but the shaft would break. He sat and thought about what would happen if their best qualities were combined. The smaller the lesion point, the deeper it will penetrate. He thought about the stabbing weapon, that it might work better. Suddenly, at that moment, an epiphany came to him. He remembered that in a battle with orcs, you need to quickly return after an attack. And if the weapon is stuck, it will be difficult to escape. But if the blade has already broken, then there is no point in pulling it out. Etsuya came to the conclusion that he could make an axe with a removable stake. He clearly decided that he should try this concept. Time passed, and there were only eight days left before the harvest festival. Shindo asked the guy in surprise what it was in his hands, and if it could be his new weapon. Etsuya said that this is not the case, and at the moment it is just a model. He will cover it with clay and prepare it to make a mold. This way, he will be able to do it with a solid piece of iron. Shindo asked in surprise if this weapon would look the same. The guy said it was, and it would be the first. After hearing this, the girl did not understand the guy. Atsuya said that the next project is to create throwing weapons for Hakazaki and Takedo. This would be their main task, but he was still working on the design, so he wasn't sure if it would be ready in time. Shindo asked if a bow would be a throwing weapon. In response, the guy calmly said that he was going to make a gun. Hearing this, Shindo was speechless. There were seven days left until the harvest festival. The blacksmith told Itsuya that everything was almost ready. After the guy was convinced, he pulled the form out of the speech. After that, he happily noticed that everything worked, and this is his first casting. He decided to make a second cast, after which they would be able to make mass production to replace other weapons. His target was 10 axes and 100 stakes. To do this, he needed to connect the two parts of the mold, simultaneously raising the temperature in the oven. The guy said that everything was ready. The latter needed to make sure that the metal had melted. When it flowed out of the car into the molds, everything was ready. He unscrewed the valve, and then began pouring metal into the mold. The work was in full swing. The festival was only six days away. The guy took off one of the parts of the form, after which he noticed that everything worked out. Immediately after casting, the blade is still too blunt. Atsuya was sitting at the machine and working with it. He needed to sharpen the blade with a grindstone. After a while, he got the result he needed. After that, it was necessary to add the skin of a recently killed orc to a removable stake for holding. After that, he inserted the stake into the right hole. He raised his weapon and joyfully said that here he was, his orc destroyer. He called this weapon a megacolaton. After that, the guy went to a simulation of a battle with an orc. Quickly enough, Yatsuya rushed up a tree, sticking a weapon into it. After that, he also quickly ran back, as it is necessary to do in a battle with orcs. As a result, a peg from the weapon was left in the tree. Looking at this, Cantal nodded approvingly. 
The others were delighted. Itsuya smiled, thinking that now they need to make a lot of stakes in his cannon. There were only three days left before the festival. At this time, Itsuya was diligently engaged in the creation of stakes. During his work, Tori and Katz came to see him. The guy asked how the work was going, and Katz said she knew they hadn't talked in a long time. Itsuya greeted them, but noticed that they seemed to be drinking. He wanted them to leave. Tori happily said that Katz was with him, and he was the new mercenary. He said he was bringing the guy up to speed. Fighting, traveling. He said Katz was his student. Itsuya got angry and asked if Tori was a beginner himself. Katz asked in amazement why Tori had bragged so much in front of him. Tori blushed and asked Yetsui why he had told her. The guy asked Yetsui which one he was aiming at. Itsuya didn't quite understand what the guy was talking about. Tori said that of the three, you would be his. Itsuya was just silent. He assumed that the guy also likes you. He said that the guy was unlucky, because while he was sitting there alone, he had already managed to make a deal. After hearing this, Yetsuya finally became interested. Katz grinned and said that Tori was lying, because she just pushed him away. Itsuya returned to work, still not interested. Tori screamed at Katz to shut up, because now it's no wonder he's still alone. He said that she would not fall in love with him, but the first 10 or 20 attempts, but this is a woman. Every time he tries to get close to her, she lets him get a little closer, but if he thinks he'll succeed on the 100th attempt, then this is still the first one. Katz exclaimed that this was very wise. Yetsuya thought that he had neither the willpower, nor the passion, nor the courage to do so. Moreover, he had other priorities. There was only half a day left before the festival. In the blacksmith shop, Hakazaki asked if this was really the gun. The guy confirmed it. Yetsuya said he would finish it within a few hours. At least he hoped so. Hakazaki was doubtful. She turned to the guy and thanked him for all these things for them. The guy said they were all in the same situation and they needed the best weapon he could make. Hakazaki said that he always says that, but she does not understand why he is willing to sacrifice a lot, just so that they have a little more chance. The guy said that he wasn't quite ready to make sacrifices, because he had a list of priorities, and if something wasn't there, then, to be honest, it didn't bother him. Such an example was normal life. Hakazaki asked if saving everyone was in the first place. The guy said it wasn't like that. Technically, it means saving them all, but the main thing for him was saving the girl and Shindo. Hakazaki was surprised by these words. The guy said it was because they were more worthy. It was based on the reasoning of who would bring the most benefit to their planet. He means that there are people who could replace Tori or Takedo if something goes wrong. Upon hearing this, Hakazaki asked if the guy was crazy. Suddenly another person said it was called eugenics, and it was dangerous. The guys greeted Cantal. Atsuya said he wasn't thinking about genetics or anything like that. He thought about their past, present, and future. Cantal said that all these factors depend on the environment in which they grew up. Nobility is learned from the best. Atsuya said that if two people make the same mistake, then the stronger one gets demoted. If they have a bad boss, then everyone suffers. Cantal laughed and said he couldn't argue with that. Hakazaki started swearing at the guy. Cantal said he used to be an officer too. He lost all his seven battles and it cost him the whole country. Hakazaki exclaimed that Rice had said that any commander would have lost those battles. She said that in fact, if it wasn't for Cantal, they would have lost even faster. The man asked if that was why they fought meaningless battles, which exhausted them, only prolonging the war. He said that if they were doomed to defeat initially, then they should have just given up. He said that as a commander he was a fool. Hakazaki exclaimed that they had been preparing hard this time, and she believed that they would win this battle. Mitsuya thought that there was a feeling that Cantal was not preparing for lost battles. Cantal said that after a while they would find out about it themselves. He asked what they had achieved. The man began to talk about how, first of all, the orcs would go to the festival to collect donations. They have already built a fort with trenches and an embankment in the north of the village. They also liberated all the houses that could serve as a shelter for more than a hundred islanders equipped with bows. The mercenaries stood up to defend the northeast and northwest, where they connected houses to mount an attack from above. They will fire arrows at the orcs as they move towards the target. Also, they hid weapons all over the island to replace the broken one. And finally, they will send the children and their mothers so that the islanders can fight without hesitation. Cantal said that they would take the wind away from their ships, as well as reduce their numbers and then go into close combat. He exclaimed that if they controlled everything, they had a chance. Or maybe they just thought they had a chance. There was only half a day left before the harvest festival. Suddenly someone shouted about the port and said that those who were escorting the ship were attacked. Hearing this, Cantal was shocked. People said that these monsters came from the sea. 
The man exclaimed in horror that they had sailed in such a way as to avoid both the fort and the high ground. Earlier, the trader said that half of them are guys who are called heroes. They don't know much about them, but the guys need to be avoided because they can come to life. The orc thanked the man for the information and said that they would see each other on the way back. The man wasn't sure about that. Monsters dealt with people with special cruelty. That's how it became known that the plan was known to the orcs. Zanza was there and tried to fight with all his might. The guy tried to attack, but the monster inflicted a terrible wound on him. Thus, Zanza became the first to die in this battle. When Cantal arrived with Shindo and Tori, more than 20 people who had been practicing archery for the past few days and were walking towards the fortifications were caught unarmed and killed. Cantal shouted to the others to get ready, because there were three orcs in front of them. Shindo and Tori accepted the order and charged. Tori tried to pierce the monster's stomach, but nothing worked. The guy started to get nervous, because it didn't work. Shindo jumped high into the air and tried to attack the orc, but he strengthened his spine. Shindo was very surprised by this, when suddenly the orc quickly turned around and hit the girl. Shindo flew backwards head over heels. She was defeated. The girl realized that she couldn't handle three at a time, and it was very bad. She also broke her long sword. Immediately after that, the orcs charged further, hitting the Tories. The monsters worked as a team. One of the orcs grabbed his comrade by the shoulder, then pushed off from him and dealt an even stronger blow to the people. Cantal looked at all this horror and thought that it was simply impossible to defeat three at a time, and they needed to retreat. The man shouted at Hakazaki and Yetsui to stay at a distance, because they could only slow him down. However, at the same moment, he thought that this was not the case, because the guys could resurrect. For Cantal, it was a serious enough problem that he needed to plan everything in advance. He began to move away from the monsters, because he couldn't attack them until they opened. It was at such a moment that he needed archers more than ever. Suddenly, Hakazaki ran up to him with a shield and said that she could distract one. Cantal agreed and thanked the girl for her help. One of the orcs ran towards Hakazaki, after which the remaining two went towards Cantal. Suddenly, for everyone, the orc that went towards Hakazaki turned to Cantal. He grabbed another orc and was ready to make a dash, intending to kill the man. Cantal realized that he no longer had time to dodge. He only swung his sword while the orc did the same. The man was almost on the verge of death, when suddenly the monster that attacked Cantilla was wounded in the head. Everyone was incredibly amazed by what was happening and did not understand what had just happened. Suddenly, one guy grinned and gasped, noticing that he had gone through. He said that this was not exactly what he had hoped for, but he was quite satisfied with this result. Cantal noticed that the guy had finished his weapon. Yatsuyu was holding on to a huge weapon that looked like a crossbow with a satisfied expression on his face. It looked like a bow and arrow, but not from this world. As soon as the monster fell to the ground dead, the two remaining orcs looked at what had just happened in horror. At this time, Yatsuya began to panic a little, because he couldn't immediately fire again. He quickly came to his senses, thinking that he needed to load the next projectile. This weapon is a crossbow that shoots iron bullets. The thick bowstring provides direct flight for this bullet but it was very difficult to pull it manually. Noticing that the guy was slow, the orcs decided not to lose the opportunity to escape and began to leave at a fast pace, which was noticed by Atsuya. He began to tighten the bowstring more actively, but it was not an easy task. He realized that now the monsters know that he needs time to recharge. He shouted at General Cantle to do something. As soon as the man caught himself, he noticed Rice, who was shouting loudly that the orcs were here. While the monsters were running after Cantal, the guy exclaimed that he would delay them, but right there he stumbled and fell to the ground. Everyone was amazed to notice this. Seeing the guy, the orcs changed their route and were about to attack Rice, when suddenly he grinned slyly. When the orcs were close enough for Cantal to escape, but not enough to attack Rice, the guy jumped up from the ground and rushed to the side. The guy showed a sign to Atsuya that he noticed. Realizing that he had the opportunity, he mentally thanked Rice and noted that he was now ready to attack. When the orcs were in range of the guy, he took good aim, then shot at one of the orcs and hit him in the shoulder. The monster screamed loudly in pain, after which two orcs jumped off the flat terrain and ran away. Noticing this, Yatsuya finally put down the crossbow. Cantal thanked Rice for saving him, to which the guy replied with a smile that it was an honor for him to save the commander. Besides, he couldn't attack, and if he tried, he would already be dead. Cantal recalled that he had previously asked the guy not to call him that because now he is as ordinary as Rice. The guy agreed, calling the man Generalissimo. Atsuya laughed, thinking that Rice really knows how to cheer up. When they had lunch, Rice made sure that no one was bored. Atsuya smiled, thinking that he was like that for everyone at the very beginning. It was already the fourth hour of the battle. 
Mitsuya told Hakazaki and Takatate how to use the new weapon and entrusted it to them. Takito exclaimed that she would give him the name Orc Eater. Itsuya and Rice, thanks to their speed, lured the orcs closer to the form, right under the fire of the Orc Eater. The guys held a wonderful defense. While the girls were watching the situation, they noticed that Yatsuya was leading another orc behind him. They were counting down before the shot was fired, when suddenly the crossbow began to creak. The arrow did not come out in any way, which is why they noticed that the bowstring was in the socket. Takito took a deep breath and tiredly said that it was very hard. At a fast pace, the girls reloaded the bolt to attack. Hakazaki instructed Takito to aim, which the girl quickly agreed to. Hakazaki shot at the orc and hit him in the stomach. The monster fell to the ground with a loud crash, after which Takito noted that the target had been hit. After that, they gave the command that the archers were shooting. The guys started firing at the orc, finishing it off. Takito happily said that they seemed to be coping at a pretty good pace. Zanzamer, from the sea, joined the Tories in the struggle at the eastern foot. Just above, Lale and Cats are firing, running from roof to roof. At the back foot, Shindo and Cantal and three of the best archers from the village. Vakatam hid in a cave, along with the village elders. They had hoped to act as bait, but a sudden attack by the orcs disrupted their plans. In addition, they have collected the wounded, whom they are looking after. There were only 200 square feet inside, but the cave doors would probably be able to withstand an orc attack. Shortly before noon, the guys killed another orc. Rice noticed that they were no longer approaching the fort. Itsuya said that they probably learned how to get around what cripples them. They began to avoid the fort. Itsuya said that knowing that they have such an impassable fort makes it easier for them to defend the rest of the area. Rice fully agreed with these words. Itsuya raised his hand and said that he would go and run around and see if he could lure anyone else. Rice was surprised, then smiled and wished the guy good luck. He was surprised that the heroes had so much strength, because he was already falling off his feet from fatigue. Itsuya waved his weapon and thought this might be his first one-on-one -on -one encounter with an orc. He became too arrogant. They defeated the orcs at this stage incredibly quickly and easily. He noticed one of the monsters and grinned, because now he knew how they moved. It was like that, even though 100% of the fort's damage was caused by its cannon. He rushed to attack the orc, thinking that he would definitely cope with the monster. When the monster tried to attack the guy, Yitsuya noticed that he had opened up and decided that this was the most appropriate moment. He was going to hit the monster in the head and defeat it completely. When he got close enough from the monster, his weapon bounced off the orc's head without leaving a single scratch. The guy flew back and was amazed that he barely touched him. When Yitsuya was right above the orc, the monster spread his arms, then slapped the guy like a gnat. Yusukitsuya is now reborn within 30 seconds. The guy was unhappy that his attempt didn't work. 14 male orcs were born on the island after the queen arrived. For most of them, this was their first contact with humans. Since orcs have the mindset of a human infant, they can learn in battle. One of the orcs began to collect earth rocks. That's how they learned about throwing weapons and started using them. With all his might, this orc swung and threw a large clot of earth rocks at the fort. Noticing this, Hakazaki panicked. With devastating force, this clot hit the fort, destroying everything in its path. People started screaming in panic that they needed to hide as quickly as possible. No one doubted that the orcs could throw a half-ton piece of land at a long distance. But as soon as the orcs realized this, the course of the battle changed dramatically. Hakazaki and Takatate panicked and started rolling their crossbow in order to shoot the orc. For a while, they aimed at the monster that had thrown a piece of earth. When everything was completed, they heard a warning from the others that something was flying from the right. As soon as one orc realized the power of the throwing weapon, the others also began to imitate it. This meaning soon spread. Hakazaki stared in horror at what was happening on the battlefield. Takedo said that she was shooting, which brought Hakazaki back to consciousness. They shot at the monster, but their arrow bounced off its body and head, which only allowed them to bleed. The orc screamed loudly in pain, then looked in the direction from which the blow came. Hakazaki and Takatate realized with horror that they had missed, or they just thought so. With even more anger and speed, the orc began to collect pieces of earth into a huge ball. This, in turn, led to unforeseen results. The long-range attacks completely destroyed the coastal trenches. People could only watch in the deepest horror as the orcs came at them. Suddenly, Rice approached the orcs from behind. He swung to attack the monster's neck, but his weapon cracked. The guy only managed to realize the hopelessness of what was happening. Hakazaki and Takatate screamed loudly, unable to help the guy. Immediately after, one of the orcs threw rice into the air while the wounded orc screamed in pain. The next moment, Itsuya also got close to them. He swung, trying to attack the orc on the head. He was sure that this time he should hit him right in the middle. 
His weapon hit exactly where he had planned with a loud bang, but it was not enough. In a panic, Yatsuga noticed that he had failed. He had to finish off the orc in one hit. The second monster tried to attack the guy, but Yatsuga quickly retreated. He jumped onto one of the walls that covered the fort, but the orc followed him. Noticing this, Takedo remembered about the weapon and shouted about it to Hakazaki. The girls immediately caught themselves and began to pull the bowstring to attack. At this time, Yatsuya was running around in a circle, delaying the time for the attack from the cannon. As soon as the orc tried to climb onto the roof of the house, he fell inside and ended up at the wreckage. By this time, the girls had already loaded their weapons and warned the guy about it, who left at a fast pace. Hakazaki took aim, and then said that it was possible to attack. Accepting the command, Takedo fired her crossbow, hitting the orc right in the heart. The monster died. Suddenly, Rice, lying on the ground in blood, called the guys. With the last of his strength, he smiled and asked if they had killed them. Rice was a former infantryman and he had a story that he told to all his comrades. He tried to say something, but he coughed up his own blood. The guys remembered Rice telling them around the campfire that they would always remember the battle they lost. He said that he and his best friend were not good for the Cantilla squad. They served under a pampered aristocrat. They were in reserve, in standby mode, but they did not have time to do anything, because their country fell apart. So, instead of fighting, they spent weeks running from those who wanted to kill them. The serfs caught Robin and Landa on the first day, after which the bandits captured Cluiz, Bottom, Kotomi, and Bitsburg. They also wounded Kerwa. He only lasted until the third day. After that, he also told about the events of the fourth day. Rice told them about the 25 days he spent on the run. He called out the names and causes of death of all of his squad, casually telling a couple of jokes. He said that on the 11th day, Makahi, his best friend, was killed in a dispute over food. They ran out of food on the 13th day. On the 19th day, Canelon lost his leg due to necrosis from malnutrition. And after that, only Rice was left. He talked about it with a smile on his face. And no matter how much he joked and fooled around, it had to be hell. Everyone loved Rice. It was easy to understand what kind of person he was at first glance. But Yatsuya could not imagine the depth of his despair and what he felt then. The guy said that when he found Asalam and Marambia at the end, he was happy. He said that he was completely useless in combat. But if they needed to escape, then they turned to a professional. The guy said with a smile that he hates it when everyone is so serious and depressed. He said he was terribly weak. Bleeding profusely, he said that he still stood up for his country at least once. And now after all those years that he was alive, he died like this. He called himself weak. Until the very end, Rice tried to be positive and not upset them. For three years in high school, Yatsuya never opened up to anyone, just because he transferred. He had always been antisocial, they had completely different lives, personalities and goals, but still he envied Rice's strength. The guy was dying with a smile on his face while all his comrades were crying with grief. Itsuya said that Rice would eventually be able to tell his friend and military comrades about how he finally did it in General Cantle's squad. Rice put his head down and closed his eyes. He smiled and said that Itsuya didn't have to repeat it. The guys stood silently by the body of their dead friend. At that time, at another point, it was reported that the fort had been defeated, and Rice and nine others were dead. The commander heard this and told Kata to go there and help the others. Kata said with a smile that he understood him. He turned around and told Katz that he would be back very soon. The notification of Rice's death came to Cantle. The man said that the guy had served him well, and he would meet Rice again in the underworld. The guys at the fort were running around in a panic in search of arrows. They saw that there was nothing left, and most of them were in the west. They tried to find more free arrows, but there was nothing. Takedo approached Kyusu and asked how many more bolts they had left. Hakazaki hesitated, then said that there was only one bolt left. There was only one day and twelve hours left until the end of the time allocated for this task. One of the orcs was walking right behind Tori while Itsuya was fighting him from the side. Hakazaki and Takatate loaded their last bolt into a crossbow, after which they shot directly into the chest of the monster. The orc took hold of his chest when suddenly, at that very moment, Yatsuya rose as high as possible and hit the orc right in the head. He caught his breath heavily, after which they were ordered to leave the fort and all the survivors to disperse and find shelter. There are zero orc eater bolts left, and Yuka Takatate has changed her class to Hunter. The girl exclaimed joyfully that this was a completely different matter and they changed classes, so now the bow is available. Hakazaki sadly said that she hadn't reached the class shift yet, although there wasn't much left. Itsuya said that there were only five orcs left, and he would go to inform the others. The guys thanked him, 
Yatsuya thought that they had killed a lot of orcs, but not all of them. Something didn't add up. He didn't understand where the others were. He suggested that they might have ambushed or attacked from the other side. He began to think about who they could least afford to lose right now. He remembered the conditions for completing the task, after which he immediately realized that the protection of Vakadom was important to them. He asked the others what was going on with the Vakadom cave. He was told that there were no reports yet that she had been attacked. One guy came up and reported to Itsuya that bolts for the Orc Eater were being created in the forge. I was very surprised when I found out that the blacksmith was still there. Tori suggested that the guy go and get the bolts. Itsuya agreed and said that it was in the first place now. The four of them can grab the bolts and then they will head to the Vakadom cave. Ten minutes later, the messenger reaches the western elevation. Cantal, alarmed, noticed that the number of enemies did not converge. Shindo agreed and said that no one had seen the Orc Queen yet. Cantal confirmed this and said that he did not like it at all. The man asked Shindo what she thought the queen might have a plan. She thought about the fact that at the very beginning the orcs swam across the sea, after which she was scared and exclaimed about the children who were on the ship. Cantal tensed up and said they should check on him. Meanwhile, on the eastern hill, people saw orcs. Two monsters were coming at them. One of the messengers came to Lale and said that the fort had been abandoned, and the four heroes were heading there. Lale noted this and told Katz and Zans to buy some time. By this time, Cantal and Shindo had arrived in the coastal village. There they met the Orc Queen. She turned around and asked if they were spying on her getting ready to swim. She exclaimed that it was very rude. Cantal immediately realized that her target was the ship. The Queen said it was true because they had killed her children, and she would repay them in kind. Shindo sternly said that she would not allow this to happen. The Queen exclaimed resentfully that people had imposed this treaty on her and people had violated it. She said they would get what they deserved. Shindo was startled by these words. At this time, Itsuya was skeptically asking what kind of good guys they were. Tori asked if that was true, because they were heroes defeating evil and all that sort of thing. Itsuya exclaimed that everything was wrong. He reminded Tori of the story of how the islanders were being eaten, and in order to survive, they offered the queen a treaty. And the orcs agreed, although they might not have done so. But new orcs were being born, and the islanders realized that in a few years they would have no buffaloes left. And before becoming a new food for the orcs, the islanders decided to kill all the orcs, thereby violating the treaty. Mitsuya said that from an impartial point of view, it is the islanders who are the bad ones. Tori said it was true, but they were human and they were monsters. Mitsuya was amazed by his friend's opinion. He said he would be the devil's advocate, after which he said that the orcs had ruined the local economy as an invasive species. Mitsuya told Tori to speak normally. Cantle suddenly said that in this situation there is neither right nor wrong. It's either them or them here. They were fighting for their own lives. This applied to both sides. He told them not to think badly of them, and he wouldn't think badly of them if they won. Shindo thought that the whole situation looked like overpopulation and food shortages in miniature. The queen spoke with fury that people acted very primitively, like barbarians, although she thought they should be smart. They were on an island that didn't have much arable land. The queen exclaimed that she did not like it, and let it be so. The girl realized that humans and orcs simply could not coexist in this place, so they fought for territory. The queen charged at them. The earth has been the cause of wars since ancient times. However, Shindo did not understand if this was right. She was sure that there should be a more peaceful way to resolve this conflict. Cantal rushed to attack and was about to attack the queen from behind. Noticing this, she tensed up a lot. With a loud bang, Cantilla's weapon was destroyed. The queen exclaimed that it hurt, after which she began to destroy buildings, trying to get Cantal. Shindo thought that even a long sword couldn't penetrate it. She tried the weapon created by Yitsuya and attacked the queen on the back, but even this axe could not help. She thought that this time she definitely had to put all her strength into the punch. She climbed up the building, but the queen tore her down, sending her flying. Shindo noticed that Cantal was near one of their weapon's caches. The queen also noticed this and quickly rushed towards the man. Using a huge weapon, Cantal skillfully attacked the queen. More and more wounds appeared on her, but she did not react. Suddenly she bared her teeth and said that Cantal had angered her. She attacked him, grabbing the man's weapon. She took it away, then threw his own weapon at Cantal. The man dodged him with little difficulty, then grabbed the weapon and spun it in his hands again. He was standing right in front of the queen. Shindo chose the right moment to use the wind and dazzle the queen. She covered her eyes with her hands because sand got into them. Wasting no time, he attacked her hands, after which they retreated together for a while. Cantal turned to Yu and said he had a plan. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the destruction of the fortifications on the eastern hill was confirmed. 
Katz was bleeding and swearing, because the man took the full brunt of it. The guy was talking about what would happen if only he turned out to be stronger. Yatsuya asked where Zanza had gone. Katz said two orcs came here. The three of them managed to kill one, but Zanza disappeared while fighting the second orc. Tori said that Zanza always fights to the last. Itsuya asked Katz where Zanza might have gone. The guy didn't know the answer to that. Itsuya wondered if they should split up to find the guy. He thought they might hand Katz over to the islanders. They needed to get the bolts. Only he and Tori could move freely, because losing the others would greatly damage their defenses. Itsuya told the others to stick together and they should remember what they were talking about. They took Katz to the Vakadon Cave, which serves as a hospital. On the way, they stopped at the forge to pick up bolts for the orc eater. At the blacksmith shop, the man told them to wait a bit, because the furnace was not fully heated yet. Atsuya agreed with this. Hakazaki and Takatate were left waiting for the bolts. The seven remaining, including Atsuya, Tori, and Katz, went to the cave. At 1430 Katz was left in the cave. Ayana confidently said that they would cure the guy, and they shouldn't worry about him. Ai was surprised when she found out that the number of orcs didn't add up. She said they lived in Kumamo Castle, and one of them might have stayed there. In case there is no one there, they can take over the castle. The guys quickly adopted this plan. At 1445, Itsuya, Tori, and four islanders reached the stone bridge to Kumamo Castle. Itsuya noticed that he was still here. Tori noticed that if it was a sentry, then he might not be alone. On the bridge, the guys were met by a stern orc. With their weapons at the ready, they rushed to the attack. The orc was also not far behind. At this time, the battle reached its climax. Meanwhile, in the southeast, Zanzamer was fighting against the orc. He attacked with his two-handed sword, but the orc intercepted him and threw the guy into the wall. Zanzamer was in serious condition. The guys only thought he was fighting an orc. Meanwhile, Cantal and Shindo were fighting against the queen. When the queen lost sight of the children, she was looking around the area equipped with houses. Suddenly she heard a crackling sound and immediately went towards the source. The queen went out to an empty area and noticed that they were not there. She realized that Shindo had just thrown away her sword with the help of air magic. The queen turned when she saw the guys on the roof. Suddenly, the whole earth shook. They realized that they were very wrong. Shindo realized what was happening and exclaimed that it was just not now. They were just starting to get something. All the battles that took place on the island were stopped. Hakazaki assumed it was an earthquake. In fact, the real hell was just beginning for them. Tori fell to the ground with Yitsuya and screamed that it was a volcano erupting. The guy looked up, full of despair, and saw explosions coming from a huge volcano. The whole earth was cracking as the guys watched in horror as most of the buildings began to collapse, turning into splinters. Hakazaki, Takatate, and the blacksmith who stayed together stared at the ruined forge in amazement. They sat on the ground while the explosions grew louder. Even Zanzamer, who had previously lost his chances of winning, was able to recover because his opponent was distracted by the explosion. Realizing that he had a chance, Zanzamer quickly grabbed his weapon and chopped up the orc. The guy took his weapon and noticed that the tremors were subsiding. He was very lucky that the orc was scared of the eruption. He was thinking that such a strong earthquake only happens once in a hundred years. At that time, the cave that served as a shelter for Ayana and Ai was collapsing from the inside. Ayana was dragging cats in her arms and shouting to her sister to be careful, because the ceiling began to collapse. She said they should get out of the cave as soon as possible. Ai began to hesitate, because they had a lot of wounded in the cave. Ayana was already at the very exit. She shouted at her sister to hurry up, but Ai didn't have time to do anything. Immediately after Ayana left the cave, the passage into it was blocked, which is why Ai remained inside. Ayana wanted to go to her sister, but the guy stopped her and told her not to approach. He wanted to warn the girl about the danger, but the next moment his head was smashed. A hail of fireballs rained down from the sky. Ayana turned around in a panic, noticing that everything around her was under attack. The old men exclaimed that these were volcanic bombs, and they needed to find shelter as soon as possible. Volcanic bombs are solid pieces of lava, more than 64 millimeters in diameter. They are ejected during an eruption, and can sometimes reach the speed of a bullet. 58 people died as a result of the eruption of Mount Ontek in the year 2014. Mitsuya lay down on the ground and hid behind a small rise. He tugged on Tori's leg. The guy shouted that the orc had retreated inside the castle, and they had to get to the entrance. He told everyone to stay close to the wall and never raised their heads. Shindo noticed with horror that an eruption had occurred. 
They were quite far from the volcano, but they were near the sea, and the earthquake was somewhere between six or seven points. While Shindo was distracted by this, the queen threw a piece of earth at the girl with all her might. Cantal screamed at you, but she did not have time to dodge, and the queen severely wounded the girl. She lifted Shindo by the head and threw him towards the sea. The girl was in the water. She thought that everything was very bad, because she had lost her vigilance. When she separated from the body, she saw with even greater horror that the water level was decreasing at an incredible rate. Cantal did not understand what had happened, and the queen assumed that the shaking in the ground had made a hole in the sea. She said it was nothing, and decided to continue the fight with Cantal. At this time, Shindo was panicking a lot. She didn't know how to tell Cantal that he needed to leave the shore quickly. There was supposed to be a tsunami right now. There were all the typical signs of this disaster. The team that Ayana was in noticed that a white wall was approaching. The girl did not quite understand what they were talking about, however, she quickly noticed that something was approaching them from the sea with incredible speed. Noticing this, Ayana started humming a song. The others didn't understand what was going on and asked the girl what she was doing. Ayana did not answer. She just sang the song while tears were flowing from her eyes. One of the old men who was there realized what was going on. When asked, he said it was a song about a disaster that happened 800 years ago. All they could do was watch as a huge and destructive force in the form of waves rose above the island. Yu Shindo, Cantal and the Orc Queen are missing. In fear, people fled, trying to find higher ground to escape death. They were shouting that a white wall was coming at them. The girl noticed with horror that a huge wave, mixing with the ashes, was turning black. Everything repeated the lyrics of the song that Ayana sang. The island began to be absorbed by the waters. Those who could manage to do it were saved. Many people were simply swept away by the current. Atsuya and his team were able to enter the castle, where they accidentally discovered AI. The girl got out of one aisle all in the hall and sighed loudly, saying that she already thought she was going to die. Everyone was shocked by her appearance. AI greeted the heroes joyfully. She dusted herself off and said that she remembered the secret passage at the back of the cave, and they were able to get there on a trolley. After her, patients and wounded people began to come out of the passage from the cave. The girl noted that they were in Kumamo Castle. She asked where all the orcs were. Itsuya said there were a couple on top. Suddenly, AI noticed that everyone was desperate. The girl asked what was the matter. In response, they simply told her to look outside. As soon as AI came to the edge, she was speechless. Half of the village was flooded, and the other half was destroyed by the earthquake and eruption. It was all over. It no longer mattered whether they won or lost. With desperate eyes, AI looked outside, where there was nothing but the remains of their village. Yatsuya looked at them seriously. Suddenly, they heard a loud crack and turned back. AI saw that Yatsuya was hitting the wall with his weapon with all his might. The girl asked him what he was doing. Yatsuya explained that the wall didn't even shake. Earthquake, lava, this castle didn't care about anything. The guy told AI that they, Vekadom, among other things, are historians of the island. The girl confirmed it. Yatsuya sternly asked if there was a weak spot in the castle, which had been destroyed, they would be able to destroy the castle along with all the orcs. AI asked in horror how Yatsuya could ask such a thing. Earlier, the guy thought about attacking the orcs with volcanic bombs, but they are on the second tier, and bombs cannot damage them. They will not be able to flood the castle with the head either, since the castle is built on the crest of a mountain. It was also possible to dig a moat and change the flow of lava, but this cannot be done during an eruption. Tori looked at Yatsuya and asked if the guy was a demon lord. Yatsuya said they wouldn't use this lock anyway. In order to destroy the castle, first of all they need to know the weak point. Aoi screamed, trying to stop the guy. She asked what he was saying, and then declared that no one would break this lock. It had been there for 400 years, and it was the symbol of their island. She didn't understand why he wanted to destroy it. She exclaimed that the castle had survived many earthquakes, an eruption and a tsunami, and it was still standing. She was about to continue, however, Yatsuya stopped her and told her to forget about it. The girl was taken aback. Yatsuya went to the castle and said that he would go look for a profitable place to fight. Everyone else just stared in silence as the guy's figure receded into the darkness. Suddenly, Tori exclaimed that this guy was like a machine. A car that moves towards the goal, no matter what. He couldn't remember a single time when Yatsuya was distracted. He said that the guy would remain lonely, after which he laughed out loud. AI just stared at Tori in silence. Suddenly she remembered the conversation with her father. She asked him how Yatsuya was doing. The blacksmith honestly admitted that there was absolutely nothing outstanding about the guy, but he worked 20 hours a day. 
The blacksmith said what a pity it was, because if he had trained him for five, or at least two years, then Itsuya would have become a first-class blacksmith. Ai shouted after Itsuya and asked why he continued to work for this goal. She genuinely didn't understand how he did it. After a short pause, the guy said that he just needed to know what he was capable of. If the goal is clear, then you just need to keep moving towards it, and it made absolutely no difference what he was doing for it, if he was moving towards the goal. As soon as she realizes how powerless she is to achieve this goal, she will realize that she does not have time to stay put. Tori smiled and said there was no logic to it. Aoi silently thought that the guy didn't really understand this. The girl said that she only knows one thing. They didn't have time to stay put right now. At that time, Ayana was sitting and sadly talking about the fact that on this island it had long been said that it was not worth building a house in the lowlands. The girl who was with Ayana tried to tell her something. Ayana continued to speak. She said the population continued to grow, and they were building houses closer to the shore. Most of the houses swallowed up by the White Wall have been built in the last 50 years. At this time, AI also cried and said that earlier their ancestors had told them to build houses on the ridge, and the valley should only be used for fields, and they even deepened trenches formed by landslides to force lava to flow out of these valleys. Ayana said that she and AI were supposed to pass it on to people, but they couldn't do it. AI looked up at the sky and said that they should definitely manage this time. They said that if an earthquake destroyed their houses, they would build them stronger. They had the technology and materials to do this. Even without natural resources, the inhabitants of the island developed the economy, producing high-quality products, and also created a peaceful state. That's how these survivors began to live better. They've had ups and downs, but they've always moved forward. They shouted that they would not forget next time and they would never forget. They, the inhabitants of Jiffin, will not let disasters destroy them. At that time, the sea was choppy. Yatsuya thought that he probably would have been paralyzed too if he hadn't known what happened to East Japan and Kumamoto. He wondered if that was what the game master wanted them to see. He sighed and mentally asked if he couldn't have chosen anything better. He sighed and thought that he still had a lot to develop, and he would complete this task. At this time, lava bombs were flying around the island. One of them hit a barrier that was protecting an unknown man. The man turned to the Jephonians and mockingly asked if they would not let disasters destroy themselves. He laughed and said that they probably thought that the orcs were a natural disaster too. He said that the next disaster would be their last. He called the Lord and said that the sacrifice was ready. He grinned and asked Darashuido Dragon to wake up. It was a giant flying lizard covered in black scales. Immediately after that, volcanic bombs began to pour out of the volcano with greater force. In the next moment, the silhouette of a monster began to appear from the ashes and clumps of lava. The dragon Darashuido has woken up. Even his level was unknown. Hakazaki and Takatate were surprised to see the monster and asked what it was. Takatate said it looked just like Bahamut. The dragon flew over the ruined city. Itsuya was looking out of one of the buildings and couldn't believe his eyes. The guy noticed that the threat level was not specified and suggested that it could be B or even higher. Even the queen didn't have such a high level. He could tell this thanks to the cook's skill at gathering information about creatures from rank and below. Itsuya didn't understand at all what was going on in this place. Despite all the disasters, the dragon landed next to Caldera with ease. As he watched everything go quiet, he noticed that he couldn't see anything else. This was an area that Yatsui and his team couldn't see. Hakazaki and Takatate watched this, but there was nothing they could do. The guy thought that he would just waste time if he left the castle and climbed this mountain. He didn't care what happened, because he had already decided that he would stay there and deal with those two orcs first. Yatsuya returned to kill the orcs. Thirty minutes later, on the first floor of the north balcony, Yatsuya came down from the roof. As soon as the guy landed, he reported that he had already returned. Tori noted that the guy came just in time. When Yatsuya looked around, he noticed two wounded men who had returned in a ball and were lying silently on the ground. The guy was surprised and asked what was wrong with them. AI coldly told him to leave these people, after which she said that he could consider them mentally exhausted. Upon hearing this, Yatsuya could only quietly agree. After that, he turned to the Tories and said that they needed to think about how to get down from the balconies, instead of going up. Yatsuya said that if they forced them to fight here, then maybe they would be covered by the head, well, or they could just push them off the edge. Tori asked if they could fight right there. Itsuya said that the battle in the castle has its pros and cons. The advantage was that the height of the corridor was too small for the orcs. They can fit, but they can't swing their arms or jump. Usually, they are in the banquet hall because it is bigger. Tori asked why not fight inside. Itsuya stated that he had not finished yet. 
He said the bad part was that if they were surrounded from two sides, there would be no escape. They are inferior to them both defensively and offensively. If they attack head-on, then nothing will work. They didn't have any protective gear. Tori asked if they could drop their weapons. Atsuya said that the guy can try if he is a great athlete. But Yatsuya thought that the ceiling was too low for a powerful stabbing blow. They could die repeatedly and recover again. But if the orcs ate them or broke their weapons, they would be of little use. With Shindo unable to recover, he didn't want to do anything dangerous, so they should practice jumping from balconies and other tricks. Tori agreed with that. In battle, the guy tried to throw his weapon at the orc, but it bounced off the roof and fell to the floor. He said it didn't work. The two orcs immediately turned to look at the guy. He cursed at the ceiling, after which Yatsuya scolded him and reminded him that he had previously said that this would not work. They noticed that the orc was coming towards them. When they saw this, they grinned and ran away from him. They led the monster to the balcony, after which they hid themselves. Unfortunately, they noticed that the orc did not fall for it. They assumed that the orcs were afraid of heights. The operation of falling from the balcony was a failure. After that, they decided to try an ambush operation. They started calling the monsters to them again. While the orc was walking towards them at a fast pace, the people who called him got scared and wanted to leave, but they had to finish the mission. At this time, the guys started counting down. When he reached one, they quickly opened the doors, smashing the orc's knees. Monsters fell to the ground screaming. Atsuya noticed that he was able to injure the monster. The orc leaned on his arm and pulled a peg out of his knee. At this time, Tori attacked from behind, who struck hard with a spear. The orc screamed in pain again. Tori quickly noticed that he couldn't pull out his weapon. He panicked and fell backwards. However, by this time, the second monster had already arrived. The orc severely wounded Tori, after which he ate him. Noticing this, Yatsuya panicked greatly, because if Tori's vital organs were eaten, then he would not be reborn. The orc broke the guy's weapon, then turned around to leave. At that moment, Yatsuya noticed that there was a small child on the monster's back. Noticing this, the guy was shocked. He noticed that this orc child had hair. He guessed that those two were guarding him. A little later, on his back, Yatsuya brought Tori, who was without legs. Heiai met them there. They met on the balcony of the first floor of the castle. Noticing Tori's condition, some approached him worriedly. The guy cursed loudly and said that this orc had eaten his legs and also broke the guy's spear. Yatsuya said that's not the case, and the guy's spear is just curved. Upon hearing this, Tori shouted in displeasure. Yatsuya calmly told the guy to let him see. Tori asked in surprise what Atsuya was going to do. The guy quickly took out the blacksmith's equipment. It was a medium hammer. He said that with this hammer he could interact with other players' weapons in order to repair them. Tori asked in amazement if the guy could fix it. He asked Atsuya to make his spear as long. The guy got down on the floor and started hitting the spear with a hammer, however, unfortunately, he saw that he could not do it, because the wooden part split in two. All he could do was return the metal to its original state. He did so, and then threw the spear back at Tori. The guy caught his weapon and thanked Itsuya for what he had done. Ai was amazed to notice that it was very fast, especially since Itsuya did not even use heating. In response, the guy calmly said that this was just a special feature of this particular hammer. The guy said that the status has been updated. They wounded one orc, but the rest remained unharmed. They were also able to see the child of the orc. Itsuya also said that this orc had hair, which the others don't have. Hearing this, Ai was speechless from shock. The girl exclaimed that if he had hair, then it was definitely an orc woman. She said that all the orcs were male, except for the queen. Atsuya didn't understand why the girl was panicking so much. Ai turned pale and said that this was definitely the next queen. Upon hearing this, he was shocked. Atsuya said that if he left her alive, the orcs would continue to breed. Ai confirmed this and said that queens live for about 40 years. It is said that during this time she gives birth to hundreds of children. Five of them are girls, and those give birth to hundreds and thousands more. After that, there was silence on the balcony. Atsuya noticed that Ai really knows a lot about orcs. The girl said she read about it in a book they import, all about orcs. Atsuya asked what else the book said. Ai hesitated and said that she was speaking the language of the orcs. The guy was surprised that she knew him. Ai said she could quite remember a few words. She added that this would be enough to attract the attention of the orcs. Memories immediately popped into her head of how she and her sister had laughed out loud when they discovered what one of the phrases meant to the orcs. Ai burst out laughing and said that she didn't think she would ever be able to say it. Meanwhile, there was a slight panic on board the ship with children and women, because they saw that the village would soon be destroyed. They did not understand what had happened to the island and what kind of black bird it was. Suddenly, they saw a huge hand grab the ship. 
The queen snorted and noted what a surprise it was. People started running into the house in a panic, trying to hide. The queen laughed and said that they were running and hiding here. She noted that they would be just a wonderful snack during their trip. She reached for the chain that went from the ship into the water. She grabbed it and said that it looked like the disaster would soon wash away the entire island completely. She sighed, then quickly and carefully pulled out the anchor. She said she had to get to her children. After that, she quickly redirected the ship back to the island. Suddenly, along the way, this ship encountered a small boat. There was a confidence in Zilla in her. The queen asked if the guy really wanted to fight her, after which she noted that he was barely standing on his feet. The guy jumped on the ship, after which the queen asked what he was doing. He held his two-handed sword in his hands and stared at her in silence. The queen threatened him to say something, but Zanziel remained silent. At that time, the guys were trying to go for a third operation. They were on the second floor of Kumamo Castle, in the inner right corridor. The guy asked about the underground path connecting the castle with the Vakadom cave. After that, Tori said that they were amazing. Atsuya was silent. He thought about how easy it was for Tori to give compliments, because he couldn't do that. He wondered what the difference was between them. Their communication skills, respect for other people's interests. He thought that the difference was in all of this. He was thinking that he hadn't just changed. It didn't matter who he was or with whom, because he was always alone anyway. It was because he hated everyone, and it didn't matter how they treated him. Tori didn't hate it, but the guy was sure that he hated Tori himself. His problem was that he despised his family, but he lives by completely different rules. At that moment, Tori turned around and with a wide grin told the guys that they should do their best. Hitsuya wondered if it was possible that he should acknowledge Tori for this. His face twisted, and he decided that he would think about it later. Suddenly, they saw orcs in the corridor. At that time, there was Ai on the other side, who asked Inosuke if he was ready. After receiving the answer, she took as much air into her lungs as possible and screamed in the language of the orcs that she had hairy legs. The monsters immediately turned on the girl. Red with shame and embarrassment, Ai kept shouting it over and over again. Looking at this, Tori couldn't hold back his laughter, because in front of his eyes a 25-year-old girl was screaming about this. Itsuya thought that Tori should shut up and focus. Noticing this, the orcs looked at each other, but they quickly realized what was happening. They are afraid of traps, so they turned their attention to the left corridor. They did not leave the banquet hall. At that moment, the guys pushed away the cart on which they went into battle. Itsuya held half of Tori's body while he was about to launch a spear attack. When the orcs came to their senses and turned around, Tori was already very close. Yatsuya threw his partner's body directly at the orc, which increased Tori's speed. With a loud scream, Tori flew straight into the monster. With all his speed, he plunged his spear into the orc's head. Tori's weapon almost immediately went right through the monster, hitting everything it could. He shouted loudly that his penis was a terebin, which they did not dare to take away from him. Tori smiled broadly because he had achieved his goal and killed the monster. As a result, there are only three orcs left in the system, including the child. 